Hey guys, Darth Glork here, back with part 10 of our Everlasting Summer playthrough. So, last time we did the Miku slash Masha ending, which was admittedly not what I expected. But honestly, I enjoyed it. Uh, it honestly, I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. And uh, it was probably, it was my second favorite after Slavia's good ending, so not bad. So this time we are on the second to last ending, which is A Cat is Fine too, which is the Yulia ending. I don't know who Yulia is, uh, but there is a picture of this sexy cat girl, and I want to get to know her. So uh, this is the second of three special routes. Technically, there is a Zenya ending, and technically, it's a special route. But I'm blowing her off, man. She's mean. So we're we're not we're not gonna do that one. But anyway, so here we are on a cat is fine too. This, like I said, is the Yulia ending. Whoever she is. So we're about to find out who she is, and uh, we're back. So uh, first of all, TGIF, happy Friday. Hope you guys are ha hope you guys had a great week and are hyped for the weekend. And, uh, yeah, and I'm happy to be back and recording, doing my thing. So, um, tomorrow is going to be probably a little bit weird. So I'm probably going to actually make myself record tomorrow. Um, even though I only, I already recorded five days this week, but tomorrow's going to be a special day because we are going to record the finale of this game. There is one more ending to go after this, after the one we're going to do today. And it is the altogether harem ending. So we're doing that one tomorrow. And then that way on Monday, we can start something brand new. Um, and then that's the plan. The other thing is there will be a, um, that I will also edit my positive anime review tomorrow on Saturday and then get it out. So tomorrow for you guys will look almost the same, uh, almost normal. Uh, but anyway, so that way there will be the one gameplay, there'll be the positive anime review and, uh, yeah, so all of that's going. Uh, and, uh, I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. So. Okay, second special route, you have to finish all the good endings, I already did that. Okay, uh, prologue, alright. Let's get to it, you know the routine. We've done this enough times. So, uh, prologue, you have to say, yes, I will come with you. Oh, pause. Uh, next one is day one, leave the keys. That'll be different. Never done that before. Uh, reply, because it doesn't matter. Day one, leave the keys. I know it's at least evening. We'll just do, we'll just run after him, doesn't matter. Uh, won't take the cutlet, cause we're not a child. He's gonna do it anyway, but at least we, we, we tried to be mature. There we go, okay. Uh, day one is leave the keys. On the other hand, why would I need them? All right, there we go. So that that was the new line. All right, so now his next is day three. So nothing matters until day three. Uh, we'll just keep silent. I don't want to encourage her. All right, so now we're in day two. So nothing in this day matters. Uh, again, nothing nothing here matters. Just knock this stuff out. I uh, was listening to if you guys are fans of Ninja Sex Party, the the band from YouTube. Uh, if you guys are fans of them, if you if you haven't heard of them, check them out. I recommend them. They're hysterical and they're awesome and they're 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 great. So uh, if you haven't heard of them, um, but they have they do a few covers in addition to original music. And one of the covers they do they did is uh, Down Under. And if you guys haven't heard that song, check it out as well. The original and the cover. And uh, their cover is hype. It's really good. Anyway, uh, okay. So it looks like none of this tournament matters because this is all on day two. So we're not going to bet with her, because screw you, lady. Uh, and I wonder if we should win the tournament then, then if it doesn't matter. Because we don't actually have to play. We could just say, I win. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, and it doesn't matter that I didn't bet with Alyssa. All that matters is that I won. If it's Alyssa, I can only imagine what she'd do tomorrow. Uh, she could make me a laughing stock tomorrow during lineup by telling everyone everything to Olga. Or I could spread gossip around the camp. Or could, I mean. The worst thing is that everyone would believe her, not me. I wasn't even sure why, but I was 100% sure about it. Alright. Uh, let's see. We'll see if I end up regretting that. Alright, so now day three is you know Olga asked me. Okay. Uh, boop. I don't know. There we go, we're good. Alright, so the next one is you know Olga asked her to help me. So obviously this doesn't matter. Uh, sure. Okay, there we go. So it's, you know, Olga asked me to ask her to help me. Okay. Next one is, who cares? Okay. Anything on this one? No, the next one is, run away. 
So, you know, at some point, run away. Uh, do other find help Slavia? Again, it, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter, so. Ah, there we go. Okay, so next one is run away. Okay. I like how we're inadvertently going down, like, the Slavia route. Even fast-forwarding, I think I might have to edit that out. There was a flash of something that there, there's no way I could show. So I think I might have to edit that out. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. I saw. I just saw this. The third one is, I think I better assist the guys with their giant robot engineering. I messed up. All right, backtrack. Okay, we are back. So, uh, no big deal. This time I chose to lose the tournament against Lena, like at the very first option, just in case. I the other one was new and I didn't want to didn't want to take a chance. So, we decided to just lose against Lena right away and be done with it. So, anyway, Olga asked me to help her. That much I know I was supposed to say. I think we're supposed to say who cares, right? Yep. Who cares? Okay. Next is this one. Yep. Uh, I think I'd better assist the guys with their giant robot engineering. Run away. Did I? I think I think the guide has it backwards because I think the run away thing happens later. Unless of course I already I failed again. We'll see. Uh. Oh, I don't remember. Did I? Did I already have the chance for the whole? I think my I think the guide is it backwards. We're gonna try this. All right. Well, they might not be so giant after all. That was surely a hard decision to make. Indeed, is there any reason to spend extra time with weird chaps fond of early to mid twentieth century sci-fi? But what if I managed to find out something useful from them? At least I could try. Standing on the threshold of the clubhouse, I hesitated for a while. Finally, all my doubts were swept aside. I opened the door and went in. Hello. Sup, gentlemen. Electronic and Churik were bending over the table, studying something closely. Hi there, cyberneticist. How's it going? I was itching to behave as friendly as I could. Hi, we're waiting for you. How'd you know I was going to say that? Electronic obviously intended to be called the Oracle. So, what do you need? Uh, you'll help us to complete the robot. No way. That's out of my league. That's, that's out of my league. Don't worry, we'll show you around. Uh, the more you hate me, the more you will learn. I'm a hard man. Uh, but I am fair. Electronic joined in cheerfully. There, there's more to life than fun and games, dudes. There's a topic to discuss. I've got a question. You, you seem to have an answer. What's the question? He inquired guardedly. Uh, do you think it's possible to travel in time? Why would you think such a thing? Electronic suddenly became serious. Uh, it's not only my idea. I took a book from the library yesterday, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. You must be you, you must have read it. So, well, I'm thinking it over. Oh. You want to keep want to keep to the future, see how life is there? No, not really. I'm not interested in traveling back in time. Why is that? I don't know. Uh, why not? Uh, well, what do you think about it? Gen uh, general relativity theory uh, postulates the existence of wormholes, also known as tunnels in space. But you wouldn't understand it all anyway. I bet I won't. Anyway, in any sense, a... Uh, in any sense, something or other, will encounter a whole bunch of paradoxes. His, like, vocabulary is way too big for me. Uh, for example, if you'll travel to the past and kill yourself, then it would mean that you from the present won't be able to exist. Well, it seems so. In a nutshell, it's all too unscientific. I see, but what if it, what if it would be possible? I mean, do I need some kind of machine, device, a program to get to the past? Or is it enough to just fall asleep in the wrong place and wake up at another time in reality? I'm sure that modern science has no answer for your question yet. Oh, yep, he sounds like Popular Mechanics Magazine. I've seen a couple of issues lying around my shelves too. I see. It appears that coming here was a bad idea. I don't know why you thought they would have an answer. That's, like, ridiculous. However, if we assume that known laws of physics are incorrect, or alternatively, the laws themselves are correct, but we don't know anything, everything about them, then it's definitely possible. Okay. Or it could be someday, for example, the more adva the, or it could be someday, for example, a more advanced race than humans that possesses superior knowledge of the nature of things. Okay. They could build a time machine, travel, or they could build a time machine, or travel through time by some other means. Okay. So that means that I was thrown into the past by humanity's big brothers? An interesting idea. And it seems reasonable if you think about it. And how would you find these, the ones that you've been talking about, if they're already in the, if you're already in the past? How on earth will we know? They both laughed loudly. Well, thanks guys. I was about to leave. Hey, hang on. What about a robot? I'm sure that everything will be just fine with it. The junior cybernetics arguments were, lo were quite logical, but alas, I wasn't an inch closer to solving the mystery of my arrival in this world. Yeah, no kidding. I strolled around the camp for some time and then headed to the canteen. Okay, I, I think my guide has it backwards. I was about to say, I don't think I had the chance to help her yet. Alright, uh, okay. Yeah, I was about to say. There we go. Okay, yeah, my guide had it backwards. Because, yeah, it doesn't happen in that order. So you're supposed to run away. Alright, there we go. 
We are on... We're on track again. And this time, we didn't get the uh, flash of a nudity seam with the whistle with Slavia, which I'm definitely gonna have, gonna have to edit. You know, I'm gonna have to edit uh, and the, the first time I went around. Just, to, you know, to some degree. All right, next one that matters is day four. So, you know, the, the day after this one. Uh, Slavia went back to the dance floor. I sat a little longer, then cautiously slipped away after making sure nobody noticed me. There you go. See, we're already in something different. The first time we, we danced with Slavia, that's because I, I made a mistake. We shouldn't have even gotten that far. I totally didn't want to see anyone after such successful dancing. The most quiet place here is the bus station, which might never be visited by the 410 route again. But I let out a scream. There was a bus right in front of me, just like the one the first day. I was petrified. How? What? How? Why? At once I remembered all my theories about getting to the camp. I was struck by the realization that during these last few days, I had gotten so used to lo local life that I had started to forget about the things happening here were not really normal. I just stood there and watched the damn uh, Icarus, which I guess is the name of the bus type or company or whatever. Then I slapped my hands to my cheeks to be sure that's not an illusion. The bus was still there. If it is here, then it's time to go home. Sayonara, sayonara pioneers, I rushed to the door. I came to my senses on the ground. My nose hurt like hell. I stood up and tried to understand what's going on. It seems like I bumped into something. The bus was more than real to the touch. I tried to uh, reach my hand out through the door, but there was some kind of an invisible wall. I was overwhelmed by a nearly animalistic fear. Fear of everything, the camp, its inhabitants, and the bus. Oh, not, not you freaking out like a child again. How the hell did I even get here? What is this damn bus, what is this damned Icarus I can't enter? Why is this happening to me? Suddenly a strong unbalancing wind blew. I turned around and saw a little piece of paper under the wheel of the bus. Something was written on it. Whoa. You are here for a reason. I caught that. You're here for a reason, here for a reason, here for a reason. Look at them go. You are here for a reason. The bad handwriting seemed familiar. I certainly have seen it somewhere. It dawned, it dawned on me. I took a small charcoal from the ground and scribbled the same sentence on the backside. The handwriting was identical. M my head cleared. I've sent a message to myself from the future. That's it. Or not. From the past. Damn, I don't understand anything. Wait a minute. Pause. Didn't... Wait a minute. Do you guys remember that? I, I, I was thinking... I didn't think anything of it. The sentence, you are here for a reason, he did write it. Like, from, I think it was, what was it his good ending? Uh, one of his endings. I think it might have been his good ending that he wrote that on a piece of paper and stuck it, like, under the statue or something. Like, he, he, uh, he stuck it there. I almost think it was during his good ending, possibly. It might have been his good ending. Or, weird, that's weird. In any case, it was my handwriting. It certainly was not hard to forge it, but I was sure that I had written that message myself. That's, that's weird. I, I think he wrote it during his good ending on the way out. I remember him writing it, I just couldn't remember which ending it was in, but that's trippy. After turning that piece of paper over in my hands, I decided to try entering the bus one more time. The visible wall was still there. I circled all around the Icarus, tapped, on the, tapped at the wheels, peeked inside through the window. Everything looked absolutely normal, but in reality it wasn't. Heavy stones just bounced off the glass without, without visible damage. No effect, not even a scratch. I sat down on the curb and sighed weakly. If you think about it, that piece of paper hinted at something, and it seems that the situation won't do me any harm. Semyon. <laughs> she found me. Seems like, the, seems like the leader's looking for me. Interesting. What will she say about the bus now? Uh, would she still insist that it won't be coming for a few days? <laughs> Sorry. I, um, it, like I said, it's morning. When I first wake up, I'm incredibly stuffed up a lot of the time, so as usual, I'm all stuffed up, so sorry. Uh, I jumped up and ran towards the sound of Olga's voice. Uh, so what do you say about that? I blurted out triumphantly and waved my hand towards the road. Say about what? She replied in surprise. Ha 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 ha. I turned around. The bus had disappeared. As suddenly as it appeared. The cry of triumph died in my throat. She's like, what? It's time to sleep already. Let's go. But, but, what? The bus. There was a bus just a moment ago. The bus couldn't be here, she said calmly. I stared at Olga's face. She was either skillfully lying or she didn't really didn't see anything. Then, is it me who might be saying things? It can't be true. I, ne I really saw that damn 410. Quit lying, I said quietly. Semyon, I don't understand. Stop lying to me. There was a bus. It's you. You're keeping me here. Why? I gritted my teeth, but tried to speak with a calm voice. You're, s you're scaring me. Time to go to bed. I won't get anything from her as usual. Seriously, though, I really wanted to sleep. I walked swiftly past the leader, deliberately not paying any attention to her. Yeah, it's not her, bro. I couldn't fall asleep for quite some time, and only the crumpled piece of paper with the words you're here for a reason reminded me that the events of these three days were real. 
that's weird. Do you think this is like, quote unquote, a repeat of his good ending, which is interesting. Which I like that idea because that means that his his quote unquote good ending isn't really his ending, which I like. A hellish crackling in my head woke me up. My skull felt like somebody was blowing it on blowing on it from the inside. I rubbed my eyes, saw the ringing alarm clock on the bedside table, knocked it off, and dozed off again. Supposedly, supposedly this is new there, fam, so I, that's the reason I'm not skipping it. I, when I woke up, it was already a quarter to nine. Looks like time to wake up. I can't miss my breakfast. I got up, scratched, my, uh, yeah, scratched myself, and suddenly remembered last evening. There was a piece of paper under the pillow. You are here for a reason. I still don't get it. What does it mean? How did I manage to send a message to myself? Why don't I remember it? Uh, more questions than answers. No questions at all to be pre no answers at all to be precise. I left the cabin and looked over the camp. No, it doesn't look like an illusion, but this memo, it made everything much more complicated. Well, what can I trust? My stomach growled treacherously. Even Agent Mulder didn't co conduct investigations hungry. I don't know who that is. There was a unexpected crowd near the canteen. Of course, there was no other place in the camp that pioneers loved as much as the canteen, but why were they all crowded on the, crowded on the porch? I came closer to understand what was going on. It looked, at, it looked like all the camp had gathered on the porch. There were all the familiar girls, Olga and Electronic. They were, they were having a lively discussion. I drew closer. Ah, Semyon, have you seen Shirk today? No, what's the matter? Ah, there we go. Now we can fast forward. I don't know why that... I mean, there was a few sentences in there that were new, but I don't know why the majority of it I was forced to watch. I don't know. Okay, so the next thing that matters is it says, Eat the apple and go alone. So, eat the apple, go alone. So really, none of this really matters until then. She tries to pull a fast one, it doesn't work. In your face, nerd. Go with Miku. All right, forward. Uh, we'll just say, I think you look gorgeous in it, because that's what we always say. Food poisoning from the canteen. Not gonna ask about the bundle. We're not gonna give her the carbon. Okay, don't eat the apple, right? No, eat the apple. We're supposed to eat the apple, okay? Eat the apple. Forward, and now we're supposed to go alone, which we all, which we've also seen. So most of that, oh yeah, go alone. Charge! Obviously, we've already seen this. Whoop! There we go, something new. All right, this time we're giving it a safety save. Okay, uh, around the next turn, the flashlight be beam illuminated a big shadow. I was trembling with fear, and I couldn't move even one step further. I was awoken from my stupor only by the thought that it could be Shurik. Shurik! No answer. Well, hello. Around the corner, the shadow disappeared. I saw a blurry human shape. Someone was sitting on a, on a stone, or maybe something. I stopped dead. What are you doing here? I heard a lovely voice. Uh, catching mice. I opened my mouth, but couldn't say anything. I was just like, did you see? Did you see any here? No, but I'm sure there are plenty of them. I shined the flashlight at her face. Well, hello. Either something was wrong with her head or with her biological species, because of her ears and tail, she didn't really look like a human. And how many have you caught? Not a single one, she answered seriously. She didn't look hostile. Subconsciously, I felt that I shouldn't be afraid of her, but at the same time, I had absolutely no idea what to ask her, how to ask her, who she is, or what she's doing. But on the other hand, normally, if you suddenly met someone in a deserted mine, you'd have a heart attack from shock. I don't know, I think I'd take my chances with her. <laughs> and the girl in front of me was definitely not a pioneer from the camp. And you, who are you? You're probably looking for him. For who? That boy? Well... Yes, I'm looking for you. <laughs> I answered after a small pause, but still, the girl interrupted me. He's been walking around here for a long time. I tried talking to him, but he didn't hear me. And where is he now? I don't know. Maybe he's still wandering somewhere. It seemed that she wasn't interested in this conversation at all. And you, how did you get here? The same way you did from the surface, without a flashlight? Why not? She gave me a perplexed look. I completely lost all comprehension. The flashlight flickered. Terrified, I started banging it with my fist. We're back. When the flashlight lit back up, the girl wasn't there. No, the waifu, come back. I don't know who or what she is, but it seemed like she could help me find the answers. It's the strangest thing, but I wasn't scared of her. I just felt like this girl wouldn't do me any harm. I don't think it's that strange. Look at her. Everything about her said trustworthy and loving. I want, I want to know more about her. But now I must find Shurik. I had the feeling that it's not the last time I'll meet this girl. Oh, I hope not. And I don't know why, but I'm sure of it. Oh man, I'm, I'm pretty sure of it too. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so the next thing matters, it says, just says go back. And it says day dot dot dot, so whenever that happens. Alright, forward! 
Oh, and then that girl from the mine appeared just before my eyes. Okay, so it's the night after he gets back, obviously. I saw her so clear, uh, so clear, it was as if she was really in front of my bed. No, I'm just seeing things. But still, why didn't I get scared back then? I just went and spoke to her normally, just like that. All the answers are all the answers are here. That that uh, cat-eared girl knows something for sure. Maybe I was too exhausted because of the camp, the mine, the labyrinth, and my nerves were stretched to breaking. I should have asked her about something, but I still have time. Yes, well, we will see. Ah, there we go. Okay, day dot dot dot. So we need to uh, go back. But before we do it, we need to save at that choice. Because apparently it says that there is, like, uh, choose each girl. So apparently there's two girl options. I don't really understand it, but it'll make sense in a minute, I guess. It's interesting how seemingly simple events can affect a person. For example, there are such widespread occurrences of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Hey, guess what? I have that. Uh, among children, among children, where when you walk on the road, you have to step on the tiles precisely, avoiding the cracks. So OCD is actually interesting because there are lots of levels of OCD. Um, just because you have it doesn't mean you have to do this, where you have to step on it a certain way, or you have to like touch all the tips of something, or whatever. Like it. it if you have it, you'll know. If you don't, it's a little hard to understand. But, like, if things have to be perfectly straight and stuff... Uh, I no, my, I have a pretty mild case of OCD, but I think I do have it, though. Because I, like... I, For instance, I alphabetized my movies and my video games and my uh, my my books and stuff. Like, it's all alphabetized. Like, when I, when I was a little, little kid and played with Hot Wheels, I would often sort my Hot Wheels by color. You know? Like, so, it, it's just, it's little stuff like that. So, mine isn't that bad, but occasionally it, but some things really, for some things it's super important to have it OCD simple, but for other things it doesn't matter. So, it, it's just, it's interesting. I have known people with pretty severe OCD, but mine is not that severe. It's just more, yeah, mine is, mine is, mine is very, it's pretty mild. Anyway. Uh, okay. It seems like nothing special, but if one doesn't get rid of it in time, just forgetting or forcing yourself to step over the tiles, it could become a really big problem in the future. For instance, one will only stare down and will get hit by a car. I never had anything like OCD, but minor events in my life often led to major troubles. Really, what's wrong with meeting a strange girl with cat ears at a pioneer camp on the edge of time and space, or possibly even between the worlds? Doesn't seem like a big deal, although perhaps I just got used to thinking that nothing really existed for me because, or before this week, uh, there was only this pioneer, or only this camp and this life. That's why something like a cat girl was just par for the chorus in this wonderland. She's just another character in this play, and, uh, neither better nor worse than any other. Oh, I think she's better. But, you know, I guess I probably probably biased. But somewhere deep in my soul, I knew that wasn't so. All the camp inhabitants seem normal, sometimes even too normal, with absolutely nothing remarkable about them. Jeez. One could even say that my life here was simply boring. And now... Hey, and now you actually have something to live for. It's, it's much better. My head was about to burst with thoughts, so I opened my eyes and jumped out of bed. The camp leader's cabin was the same as usual. Outside the window, a bird monotonously cheap, uh, cheeped, trying to burst the capillaries in my eyes with her singing. I doubt that's what she's doing. The clock showed 11 a.m. Why didn't Olga wake me up? Uh, though who cares? She probably was going to let you sleep in because she, you know... Because you're tired, idiot. I slept through at le I slept through at least. However, I didn't feel really feel like I'd recovered. The whole world was seemingly laughing at me. The bright sun outside, the lightly blowing breeze. This says a lot about his psyche. Uh, there was a lag spike there. I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. Gently whispering to the crowns of the trees, and this nasty bird had brought some fellows with her, obviously trying to ruin my mental stability. I think more the the more like likely thing is that you're overly sensitive. Sorry, I was ju I'm just checking my computer. Because there, there was a lag spike there, a pretty, a one that you probably saw my mouse just like lock up on screen for a minute. Okay, sorry. Anyway, uh, right. He was feeling like conspir conspiracies against the birds or whatever. The, uh, the water from the wash stands was ice cold as usual. When wa while washing my face, I realized that I'd forgot my toothbrush, tooth powder, and towel in the cabin. Strange that I didn't forget my head. Yeah, that that's true. I couldn't imagine a worse start to the day. Yeah, it's awful. Sunshine and birds. It's awful. In that moment, I thought it was the worst day of all I had spent in this camp. Although there wasn't there wasn't a lot of choices, little more than a hundred hours, not enough time to get the full image of a new home. Home. Th that uh, this word struck my mind painfully. Do I have to stay here forever? Why now? How? Or but why? How? What for? Well, pal, I recommend you stand there and ask why, how, and what for, like about thirty-five thousand more times. I'm sure something will apparate in front of you, and you'll you'll get your answer. I mean, you know, every day, every time you ask, it'll just come poof, there it is. Now, in this particular case, you might be lucky, and the cat girl might be in front of us to give you hope, but, like, 
there's really no point whining because you can't force yourself to get home. So suck it up. Anyway, sorry. I'm just after after our whole relationship. I'm sick of Se of Semyon. Sick to death of him. Sorry. I helplessly sat on the grass and buried my face in my hands. Suddenly, I re remembered that girl. I wonder how many more fantastic creatures I'll meet here. Hopefully, I'll just meet her. Wonderful day, isn't it? I couldn't even be bothered to raise my head. Yep, couldn't be any better. I answered, keeping the same pose. Why so sarcastic? Sarcastic. I was surprised and looked up, but there was nobody nearby. Is it my imagination? No, I heard that for sure. Maybe I'm losing my mind. That underground mind, Shurik, voices, the cat girl, more voices. Is there anything here I, was, I can be sure about? You can be sure that you're an idiot. I punched the washstand painfully hard and immediately jumped up, holding my hand and cursing. Well, you brought that on yourself. Damn it! Ah! The waifu! Suddenly, somebody walked out of the bushes in front of me. Or something. Or something. Hi! It was the girl from yesterday. Hi! I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to expect from her. Uh, she's probably a hell beast and came here to end my life. Oh, shut up! You idiot! Don't- don't be ungrateful! If I, if life gives you this kind of opportunity, you don't turn it down. So stop being such a baby. Anyway. That is, of course, only if it hasn't ended already. The cat girl stared at me. It hurts? She looked at my hand. Yeah, I answered timidly. Then why? Why what? Why did you punch it? Because he's an idiot. Because I was angry. I was completely unsure how I should talk to her. Perhaps one wrong word, phrase, or gesture could be fatal for me. Oh my gosh, I'm so sick of him. I'm so sick of him. Angry at who? But the girl wasn't showing any signs of aggression. It seemed that she was just wondering what is happening. At myself? I see. I, she smiled faintly. <laughs> Listen. I don't know how I should put it, but I must ask. I kept silent for a moment, gathering myself. Who are you? The girl looked at me blankly. I am me, of course, she said confidently. No, no, or no, no doubt about it, but how should I say it? You just don't, you just don't meet a human with cat ears and a tail every day, you know. The cat girl carefully examined the aforementioned parts of the parts of the body and asked, Why? I was totally confused. In the, uh, if in the first few minutes I thought it was necessary to be afraid, to be very careful, now it se it, now she seems more like a good spirit being than a hostile monster. Finally, he's catching up. Because in my world, I was absolutely convinced that I shouldn't hide anything from her. In my world, this only happens at fairy tales. That, or what's a fairy tale? Well, it's a story which cannot happen in reality. So I don't, I don't really exist? The girl laughed. I'm not even sure that I should exist, but I can touch you so you exist. Just thinking about the fact that she will touch me, I felt uncomfortable. Why? I mean, sorry. <laughs> I was like, why should you? Like, you be grateful, you fool. You fool. Well, let's say I exist. Yes, I stepped back. Goody, goody. The girl smiled and waved her tail. There was an awkward silence. All the time I'd spent in this camp, I lived as if in a dream. Sometimes when you sleep, you realize that everything that happens in your brain is just a figment of your imagination and you need to ju just to wish. I thought for the I thought so for the last five days that this thought constantly existed somewhere deep in my soul. However, it seems that everything is happening in reality. At least I couldn't just wake up. I just want to understand. What? The girl was still smiling. How I got here and how I'll get out of here. Suddenly, I heard voices by the roadside, so I turned around. Slavia and Zenya were slowly approaching the washstands. And you, and the girl, but the girl had disappeared. No, the wife who come back! Did you see? Did you see it? No, don't bring it up, you idiot! Like I just needed someone to confirm the existence of this creature. Uh, then I can convince myself I'm not going crazy. What an irony, to go mad while in the land of Oz. Though, just arriving here is already a ticket to the loony bin. And even if I wake up right now, I still wouldn't be sure that it was all a dream. See what? The, girl lo the girls looked at me blankly. Anyone beside me? I could hardly speak. So, an illusion, huh? So, I'm actually... You should get your head examined, seriously. Xenia snorted and passed by. Slavia smiled apologetically and hurried after her. This is the reason I'm not getting your ending, Slavia. Or, not Slavia. Xenia. Sorry, Slavia. Uh, that's why Xenia's not getting an ending. So, it's all that simple? I just wanted one thing now. For someone if in this nightmare to believe that I'm still sane. This whole camp and its pioneers didn't seem as real as yesterday. In the end, less than a week ago, I lived the completely normal life of an ordinary man of, of his time. And now, I wouldn't say ordinary. I'd say, I'd say below average. Uh, far below average. Maybe everything that happened made me think that all this is going the way it should. That it's normal just to be, to, just to, be, to exist here. And now the last leftovers of my common sense desperately clung to this cat-like girl with the ears, trying to prove to the locals that I'm not crazy. Don't prove anything, you idiot! Just like... Go about your business! Like, there's no reason to prove it to anyone, moron. See, you don't exist. You. It's me and, this, it's me and your fairy tale, not you and mine. 
he has absolutely lost his mind. My head was about to explode. If not for the signal for dinner, perhaps I would have run to the library. What do you mean for dinner? Did Wasn't it 11 a minute ago? Perhaps I would have run to the library searching for medical books with lobotomy instructions. Oh, what a baby. The canteen was crowded as usual. Some things never change. For the first time, I looked at all the local pioneers with a slightly different angle. Indeed, why is everything so correct? As if someone created this pioneer camp by carefully compiling material from the internet, without bothering to visit such a place himself. Uh, it was not just an old Soviet movie. The strict camp leader, the exemplary pioneers, even Ilyana, and even Alyssa. All within the normal range. So where does this strange girl come from? She seemed like a smear of paint that just happened to be on the picture due to the shaky hands of a sloppy restorer. Electronics suddenly sat beside me. Hey there, he smirked. Hey, what are you thinking about? Oh, a sexy cat girl that I miss already. Just, there was absolutely nothing wrong with speaking speaking openly to anyone. Not anymore. Did you happen to see anyone strange here? Strange? Well, not quite human. I don't really understand. Electronic laughed. A girl with cat ears and a tail? I said shortly. A girl with ears and a tail? He began to think. How do you, how do you know about her? Well, let's assume I saw her. This conversation was starting to get interesting. Okay, let's start to get weird. Let's assume what you actually did. Is it really so important? Electronics stared at me seriously. There's a legend here about a cat girl. She steals food, small, small bits and pieces of stuff, and avoids people. Really? A legend. So what does this girl look like? I never never saw her myself. They say that she has a cat ear and tears. Uh, a, a, has a tail and ears as you described. I always had ears and tail. That's why, that's why it threw me off. Uh, what else? Well, this legend is old, so I don't know much about it. And uh, who do you think knows more? Uh, ask Olga. She's been in the camp many times, even before she became a camp leader. Sorry, taking a drink, trying to help my poor throat. Uh, interesting. I didn't didn't expect that. I mean, interesting. I stood up and went to find the camp leader. Yeah, didn't expect that. I bet she decided to take a nap after lunch. Perhaps Olga was the only element of what. That was somewhat out of place in the picture of an ideal camp. Uh, she certainly was not the role model camp leader. I opened the door and confidently entered the cabin. And indeed, she was lying on the bed reading a book, as expected. Set me on, slacking again? Actually, yes, but anyway. I wanted to ask you something. She stared at me and I hesitated a little. Maybe I shouldn't be so straightforward about everything? It was like my internal firewall had triggered and I just couldn't, I just could not tell the, the camp leader that I had seen the cat girl today. Maybe I got quite used to hinting at something, avoiding straight questions, lying, and keeping words back. In just four days. Although I guess I've been doing that my whole life. I could I could tell. Olga, I was at the dinner, spoke with Electronic, and he told me a legend about a cat girl that supposedly lives here. He also said that you would know more. Why do you need to know that? The camp leader gave me a, a piercing look and stood up. Just curious. I, I like stuff like this. I tried to smile, but it didn't seem to make things any better. We have a completely normal camp. Sure you do. Completely normal. Don't even want to imagine what you'd call unusual. I suppose something with zombies and maniacs, a nightmare and slow on, you know, Pioneer Camp Street. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that name. I just can't. I just, it doesn't sound natural. And so it sounds like I'm mispronouncing it. Uh, yeah, I understand. But Electronic said that you'd visited this, this place before. Yeah. The camp leader was thinking about something. However, there is indeed a legend that, so, uh, that somewhere in the surrounding woods, a strange cat girl lives. Uh, a strange cat girl lives. Sometimes stealing food, small items from cabins. She's afraid of people, and if someone accidentally sees her, she runs away. That was quite the different from what I saw this morning. That girl was more like watching me, studying, trying to understand, but not afraid at all. And you... Have I seen her? Olga interrupted me. No, I haven't, but I was quite, uh, quite close to doing so several times. Bottles, milk, tooth powder, plenty of other things disappeared from my cabin sometimes. Mysteriously disappeared without a trace. I completely forgot about the fact that all the pioneers here don't actually exist, and just listened attentively to the camp leader. What an idiot. I was curious where this stuff disappeared to before, but in the end, there's no evidence of her existence. She smiled as if implying that this conversation is over. And if there was? Why are you so interested in this? Who wouldn't be interested in stuff like this? Though I still had many things to add, rack my brain for. I don't know. I don't know. The camp leader thought about something for a second, and then returned to her usual mother of all camps state. Well, seems like you've decided to become completely laid back. Do something already. She paused and stretched herself in such a way that wrinkles uh, that shouldn't be there at her age came out. Go on, get down to business. I just sighed and went out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, mom. All in all, no one from among the pioneers had ever seen a cat-eared girl. They'd only heard legends. Well, I should probably find her. I'd already recovered from this morning's shock event. This morning's shock events and existential thoughts have by now stopped pressuring my brain, so it was possible for me to take a reasonable position, more or less. 
It was necessary because I still had a lot of questions. How did I get here? For what reason? Why? And where is here? Oh my god, I'm so sick of him just like sitting here. If I just think about it for eight days in a row, maybe an answer will come. Like, nothing's gonna come. Stop asking. Like, you know, you can't apparate an answer, so shut up. Oh my god, I'm so sick of Semyon. I'm, so, I'm more excited for this playthrough to be over, not because of the endings of the girls, just to get away from Semyon. He is the most irritating main character in the world. And the cat girl is the catalyst for it all. But I didn't want to start theorizing about parallel worlds, aliens, experiments, and the afterlife again. I was fed up with this after I just my first few hours in the camp, yet here we are asking again. Perhaps I just need to put aside the theories and look at the physical reality. No shit. If I assume that this world ex exists regardless of my will and I have to live here, my arrival here is inexplicable. It's more worthwhile to concentrate on studying the world and analyzing possible events which ha ha may happen to me here. No kidding. I'll do that until the opposite is proven. Until then, let's assume that I'm stuck here. For the long haul, if not forever. The deck chair, but, uh... It's like a melody, but a different word. I know what it's trying to say. Squeaked with my every movement. Uh, lilac branches, yeah, lots of, lots of talk, talking about the tree, was, or the trees or whatever. Treetops, look at that, more movements. Cabins, the square, Genda's monument, the clubhouse building was just a little village of peasants huddling near the millennial walls of a grim fortress hidden in a grove. Why? Like, I don't, where, why are you just like, let me come up with another complex analogy. That's something else that really, that really pisses me off, is I'm so sick of the overly intricate, like, comparisons and theories and, like, like, uh, it's not, not a parody, it's, um... Something that stands for something else, you know what I mean? You know, I'm sick of all the complex analogies. I'm really sick of it. And all of us here, and all of us here, I, neither people, me, or the cat, or cat girls, are just servants of an evil genius hiding somewhere out there. See? There it goes again. It would be much easier if the camp was on top of a hill. Why? Because a thousand years ago, the best place for a fortification was always somewhere up high. Probably that someone was just nothing to be afraid of. But in this case, it would he would still hide, not hide so carefully behind the treetops. I've... What's the point of this, dude? I sighed and closed my eyes. My consciousness slowly started to desert me, and soon the whole world faded into darkness. Good heaven, I'm so sick of listening to Semyon. Ooh. We're having a moment. Take my horse down the old town. No, sorry. <laughs> I just saw the road. The other thing you, uh, the other one that came to mind immediately was like, "Take me home, country roads." Uh, that was the yeah, that was the first thing. Uh, that was the other one that came to mind about the same time. Anyway, sorry. I <laughs> just like r ruined the moment. Sorry. <laughs> and again, before my eyes, like an endless carpet, the road surrounded by woods and fields goes ever on. The bus is going somewhere, leaving behind everything I knew, loved, and hated. An unfamiliar girl is leaning over me and gently whispering something in my ear. I'm actually interested in what she's saying, but I can't hear her. I'm just watching everything from the side, and I can't see everything except her face. And hear everything except her words. I feel everything except my own life. My, how philosophical. <laughs> I woke up feeling like I was suffocating and began greedily sucking in air. My breath soon went back to normal, and an intolerable thirst came upon me. But what was that dream all about? And who was that girl? These questions again. Stop asking questions. Uh, maybe I've already died and gone to hell. Maybe so. Can a being, uh, can a human f being feel that his life is now over and that he can just move on to the next stage of existence? You'll never know, man. My head was about to explode due to such cosmic thoughts. Stop thinking them. Problem solved. Uh, what do I do to deserve this? Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go again. I'm just an ordinary guy, not a philosopher, not a theologist, not a scientist, and I don't want to understand the substance of things, the way of the universe. Not to say I'm not going to ask all the time, but I don't want to know. I'm not asking for any more than just to live my life peacefully and then doze off and, in, and into an eternal sleep when everything is over. Uh, but, but no, I'm just trapped here. Tears of frustration welled in my eyes. But why is it always like this? I started to think that if I gave it any more thought, I would either understand the substance of all things or go insane for good. I'm going to go with the latter. Ultimately, it all started with, the, with a bus. I got in, went to sleep, and there was a girl. Perhaps one of the local pioneers. Maybe even the cat-eared one. Well, why not? I can't rule out a single idea. So I'm here now. My thoughts stopped. Tumbleweed rolled back and forth in my brain, bouncing along the organ, which kept my ears from falling off. I don't know. And that's all. Now I'm here. In hell, heaven, purgatory, whatever. Looks like I'm going to spend the rest of eternity in this place. So might as well find the happiness to be found here, man. For some reason, I fixated on this exact theory. It's strange that I didn't care about the fact that a spiritual being doesn't have basic human senses, sight, hearing, touch. All in all, I mean, you don't know that either, technically. All in all, a first glance, there was nothing different about me from my condition a week ago. Well, except for being a couple of years younger. 
then what's so bad about what happened? I might even consider this a second chance. Exactly. After all, it's not that hard to get a job. I could rent a room in a hostel. I'm 17 now. I'm still healthy. My brain is in an excellent state. My energy's at its peak. I might try to achieve something. But what had prevented me from doing so before? I, was I really that old back then? I jammed like an old rifle, and without outside help, I couldn't have escaped this cycle of self-reflection. Oh, thank God, I'm actually happy to see Lena to get me out of this cycle of self-reflection. Fortunately, Lena soon appeared by the camp leader's cabin. Thank the Lord. Hi. I raised my eyes reluctantly and, st and stared through her for a few seconds. Hello. Um, I... She stopped, looked away, and blushed. Well, never mind. May I have a seat? Sure. Lena perched herself on the edge of the deck chair. What are you thinking about? Trying to understand the laws of the world? And how's it going? She asked seriously. Not too good. Perhaps they're beyond human comprehension. Then maybe you shouldn't bother. But I exactly. But what should I do? Literally anything else. I just have to. Why? And really, and really, why? Does it happen to be some uh, some vital urgency? I didn't really want to bother thinking about things like that in the past, and lived in relative peace. But what had changed so drastically now? I don't think about it now either. Uh, I won't think about it now either, and we'll be living in somewhat different conditions. But what's wrong with that? If there is no choice, I don't know. It seems that nothing is up to me. I looked like Lena wanted to say something, but she didn't. And you probably came to see Olga? Yeah. I mean, no. But, to be honest, what is it? Sometimes I feel that way, too. What do you mean? That nothing is up to me. I looked at her attentively. She was sitting with downcast eyes, nervously toying with a handful of field flowers. They were yellow like the fervent rays of the summer sun. Well, you know, you could just say they were yellow. Like, whatever. Thanks, philosopher. Well, you know, these flowers, for instance. They were growing just for the sake of it. Then I ripped them out of the ground, and that's all. She was literally about to start crying. I didn't. It didn't really fit my picture of Lena. Well, yeah. To be honest, I really don't know what to say. Well, so so are we. So we are ripped out, and then... She got up abruptly and rushed in the direction of the square without saying goodbye. Well, that was interesting. In indeed, Lena, like all the other pioneers, seemed to be real. Not a figment of my imagination, not a doll, not an NPC. A few hours ago, I was sure that I'm the only one who exists here. And possibly the cat-eared girl. I wish I could find her. Oh, me too. I'm in a state of something like spiritual deprivation. All my senses are working properly, but I still have a painful need to know why I'm here. As if the need for identity to find my place in the world to determine its nature's laws and mechanisms had become vital, just like the need for food and rest. It's so, but, but it's not, though. That's what's interesting. Uh, it is probably the worst punishment for a human to have the desire to understand something but, un but not the ability, to wish to change something but to not to have the opportunity, to strive for something but to un be unable to achieve it. I'm so sick of this philosopher, I swear to God. I never seriously thought before, but why am I in this world? How much time will I spend here? What do I have to do? There's the questions again. Now, after encountering this other world, I have nothing left but to think about these. I guess that, that if it is possible to escape from here, I will return to my quiet life where I don't have such troubles. But I won't return. It's so hard to face a task which cannot be completed. If I could choose my fate, I would never agree to the bus, the camp, the girls. I would stay there in my apartment in front of the monitor. You can't uh, demand anything more from a person than what he can do. It's better to spend the rest of your life working in the mind than trying to understand something that you just won't fit into your head. After all, there is no other way. Of course it is possible to make a valiant effort. Oh my god, the philosophy is killing me. To try not to think, try to under accept this reality and start a new life. But it's not part of human nature to neglect everything that happens around you. If, if I was accused of a crime, accused, sorry, not accursed, if I was accused of a crime that I had not committed, of course I would try to resist to prove my innocence. No one would agree to live in jail instead of a home, wherever their home is like. And now it's it's me who is thrown into the world I used to, I was used to, what? And from the, from the world, I was used to into this jail. Good, good God, I don't know why that was so hard. Though it is boundless, though there are no walls or bars on the windows, it is still a jail. I did not ask for this, and my only desire for now is to return back home. And the only key out of here is just a bit higher than I can reach from a jump, and there's nothing useful around. No chair, no stool, not even a small stone that could be put under my feet. And no one will help me. A few centimeters, just a few centimeters separating me from freedom, from realizing everything. Maybe it's impossible to return back home, but at least I'll be able to escape from this jail. The, that is exactly what I've wanted for the last five days. Oh, thank God. Is the philosophy over for now? Can I, can I, can I, can I get a break? I don't deserve this, as the player. Night slowly descended onto the camp. Dinner went by without me, and the camp leader stopped several times by the deck chair trying to tell me something. But I was already in another world. The, the world of my cage without a key, bound by some sort of some sort of knot. I don't know. Bound by a rope. There we go. I said the same thing he did. It was not long before the light in the cabin was turned off, and crickets started their lamentable whining all around. Somewhere in the distance, an owlet was hooting at a speed of 37 hoots per minute. Oh, pfft, why? An owl was hooting. 
That's all he should have had, had to have said. I was sitting and rhythm rhythmically knocking, trying to accompany him. Suddenly, bushes rustled around me, and a squirrel with a nut in, in its teeth climbed on a tree. It, th how exciting. It must be hearing to meet its family. The summer's night charm was as rich as always, but it didn't affect me in any way at all. The mechanisms of my brain, and probably my soul, were in need of serious maintenance, not just a uh, slapdash repair of a bodywork and a new paint job. I decided to take a walk. Because, thinking about it, I've been sitting in the deck chair for almost the whole day. I even took a small nap. Everyone in the camp was tired. The camp was sleeping. Good heaven. I am so ready for this to be over. I like the endings, like the girls. I like when stuff's happening, but listening to his philosophy when he just sits there and ponders for, and I have to read half an hour of a, of a literally a wall of text of him just thinking about things that he's never going to get an answer to is actual, is actual torture. It is actual torture. Like, I like the endings. I like the girls. I like when, like, there's actions, but listening to him is killing me. And so that's why I'm ready for it to be over. If you, like, removed Semyon from the story and you replaced it with someone who's a little bit less philosophy and a little bit more, I can deal with this. It's okay. I'll be fine. Then this would be uh, way better. The walk between Pioneer, Pioneer's cabins, the square with the statue of Genda, the forest path, all that was changing like pictures in a kid's book. The whole world looked like a picture too, and that is not what I was thinking just to, just yesterday. And the reason for that was a strange girl with animal ears, a cat girl, though she could literally, though she could just as likely be another animal. Now nah, I would say cat girl. It makes it. I feel like it makes the most sense. It was like there's a defense mechanism that activated just after I appeared here, which didn't let me look for answers or get a hold of a situation. There were there was always oh god, anything other than thinking about how I was get out. Anything blah blah blah. There's more of the philosophy. Can't handle it. I sat on a stump and closed my eyes. A million images. Of appeared in my brain at once, and among them was a road, a bus, and that girl. Yeah, the girl with the animal ears. It was her who was on the bus. Well, hello, my love. No, come back. Ah, she's back. Yay. I quickly opened my eyes and saw her in front of me. Literally the savior we all needed. Why? Because she broke him up from the philosophy, and that makes her a hero. I quickly opened my eyes and saw her in front of me. At first, it looked like a dream or a hallucination, but a sudden gust of wind br brought me back to reality. Ah, uh, I'm so happy things are happening. The strange girl was sitting and sprinkling sugar on a mushroom. They grow better this way, she said with a serious face. Who? I uttered with difficulty. The mushrooms. Who else? The mushrooms. Who else? Mushrooms. Yes, mushrooms. Why do, you, why do you need those mushrooms? To eat, of course. Why else would you need mushrooms? The girl pouted. I just didn't know how to start a conversation with her because I was sure that the thing which looked like a strange girl with animal ears had brought me here and making friends with a higher being wouldn't do much good. Why? Do you have more sugar? She asked suddenly. I don't know. No. Why do you need it? What do you mean, why? I told you, for the mushrooms. They grow better that way. Despite everything, the girl looked totally normal. Of course, you don't often see a human with animal ears and a tail, and they actually and it, they actually looked real. But apart from that, I could break some. I don't know why I said that. Maybe I just wanted to earn her trust. As long as mind reading wasn't one of her abilities. That's all right. No need. There's enough. Good. And? What? Why did you come? What does she mean? Come to this glade or come to the camp? Or to this life, dude. Like, let's just for let's just for all intents and purposes assume she's talking about the most literal translation. How about she probably didn't mean why do any of us come to Earth? Like, she probably didn't go straight from zero to philosophy in like a second. Odds are she's like, where you know, why are you here? Probably literally means why are you in this glade? Probably not. Why did you come to Earth? What even is life? Like, you know, if a tree falls with no one around, does it make noise? Like, like what is this? I'm so sick of Semyon. I literally can't handle it anymore. I'm gonna snap. I'm gonna, I am going to snap. I have, well, this is part freaking 10, and I was done after part two. So like, with, with Semyon, I like the rest of it. I can't handle Semyon anymore. I'm so ready for this to be over so I don't have to listen to his stupid monologue anymore. Uh <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> Rant over. I'm okay. My head was about to explode from existential thoughts. Just a little bit more. Just everything would become crystal clear. No, the answer is yeah. He doesn't understand shit. We get it. I was just having a walk. See, look at that. I skipped two sentences. Nothing changed. You still got it. She asked, why are you here? He answered, I'm just going on a walk. Haha. -ha. See what I mean? Skip the philosophy. Nothing was different. We just cut out the stupidity. The words echoed hollowly in my head. He felt like, insert, you know, insert. See, this is the other thing. Analogy. That's the word I was looking for earlier. 
look at this. Like, it's like it's like a Family Guy episode. How ever like every joke is them being like, it's like uh, and then they compare it to something. And although it's it's often, I mean, although it's sometimes it can be funny occasionally, it's the same thing. When he's like, I felt like, it's almost like, this reminds me of, and then he makes a ridiculous analogy that's like five, 15 sentences that is barely related. You're like, is it? Like, I just, like, who who does that? Oh my god, I'm so sick of him. I see. The girl answered without much interest and went back to her work. It was you, back there in the bus? Me, she replied lazily without tearing herself away from the mushrooms. Why did you bring me here? I didn't bring you. Then who? I don't know. But were you in the bus? I was. And? What? Yelling at her was dangerous, but I couldn't help it. What? 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 Answer me! Did you ask something? It looks like this conversation doesn't bother her at all. Who are you? She looked at me in surprise. I am me. Okay. Where are you from? I don't know. I'm all, I've always been here. What do you mean, always? You must have come from somewhere, no? I don't know. I doubted for a moment that this is an omnipotent being before me. Of course, this girl is a little extraordinary, to be precise, absolutely extraordinary. And she was she was with me in the bus then, but maybe she has nothing to do with my arrival here. Anything's possible. What do you know? I know how to make supplies for winter. She smiled with sweetness and ease. What supplies? <laughs> well, you know, for the winter. It gets cold. I've never seen the local winters, though. Uh, I've never seen the local winters, though. How come you've never seen them if you've always been here? I don't know. Sh uh, she looked at me intently. Anyway, you're boring as hell. Me? Yes, you. I agree. How do I bore you? Your your stupid questions. Stupid? Well, I was dragged out of my usual world, brought here, and now my questions are stupid? Yes, she calmly replied. I agree. She is not only sexy, she's right. So, what questions would you consider not stupid? Where one can get sugar, for example. In the canteen, where else? Plenty for you to steal. You're, you're, well, you're well known for doing that, I've heard. I do not steal. The animal-eared girl was outraged. I'm borrowing it. It comes back anyway. It comes back or not. I don't it comes back or not. I don't care. I want to understand how and why I'm here. I want to go back. I am I'm not interested in that. The girl stood up and shook herself. But I'm interested. If you're not in the one to blame for everything, then you must know the answers. Someone should know them after all. She looked at me intently and laughed. You're funny. I completely lost my temper. Stop mocking me. You, I am fed up with you. Why me exactly? How am I worse than anyone else? I never asked for anything as fun as all this. Leave me alone. I didn't bother anyone. Oh my god, what a complainer. My whole body shivered. The blood pounded in my head like a cannon. Everything went back before my eyes. Have you blown off all your steam? She asked quietly. I was about to smash her. At least to check if she was flesh and blood. This guy is an asshole. Alright, let's go. Where? You'll see. The girl gestured me to follow her and went into the depths of the forest. I, why would anyone like Semyon? Literally anybody. Her, anyone else. This guy is a dickhead and I'm sick of him. After some time, I started to suspect that we were walking in circles. Finally, I decided to check it out and put a candy wrapper in a noticeable spot. Indeed, we soon passed it again. Wait, I didn't dare to grab her hand, so I tried to stop her verbally. What? Where are you taking me? I said that you'll see, but we're walking in circles. So what? What do you mean, so what? You won't get anywhere anywhere by walking in circles. But you said it yourself that you, we, that you were just having a walk. The girl seems strange, illogical, even arrogant, as if she takes pleasure in mocking me. I'm not moving an inch until you explain what's going on. Okay. She stopped and leaned back against a large tree. I was just bored. It's the same old stuff all the time. All the time. But recently, lots of new stuff happened, and now... Now what? Now I could talk to you. Why would you want to? She smiled. And you couldn't do it before? Well, I certainly could. Maybe. So what happened? I don't know. Then why do you think that something has happened in the first place? I've got a feeling. A feeling, huh? I gave a helpless sigh. Maybe she's just a lunatic that escaped a local asylum and not an om omnipotent being. Yes, a completely normal lunatic with cat ears and a tail. Come on, let's get serious. Okay, fine. The girl looked at me intently. Who are you and what's happening here? I don't know. She answered with the same expression on her face. And who knows? I don't know. All right, I'm going to sleep. I had no strength to talk about it, to listen to her nonsense, to walk in circles in the forest. Even if she knows the answers, she can re she can return to me in the in the usual world and all, not today. Just enough for today. If I stay here one more second, there won't be anyone left to return. Good night, the girl said nicely. That's all. What else do you want? You're going you're going to sleep. You're going to sleep. She's right. Okay, do you at least have a name? Name? Yeah, a name. I don't know. And who knows? I don't know. Okay, and what should I call you then? I don't know. But a person, every single thing in the world, should have a name. There's no other way. She looked at me uncomprehendingly. Perhaps then you will be Yulia. Yulia? I don't know why I chose that name. Maybe it was the first thing that came to mind. Fine. She smiled merrily. And now I have to go. Hey, she has a name. The girl flickered her ears and disappeared into the forest. I slowly dragged my feet back to the camp. 
Now it looks like I was in some sort of uh, trag comedy. I don't know what that is. Uh, some sort of comedy, maybe? The higher beings cannot be idiots with the developmental level of a kindergartner, can they? Although it is possible they don't perceive the world the same way as we do. I was so exhausted, I couldn't fully comprehend everything that happened to me recently. Ugh, yeah, you can't comprehend much of anything, can you? The answers could be right before me, I just need to stretch out my arm. Oh my god, here we go again with the whole stool thing. And how could I be so calm in such a situation? Maybe I'm just tired. Dead tired. If you're lucky, if you're, if we were all lucky, you'd just be dead. Olga waited for me on the doorstep of the cabin. At last. And where were you wandering in the dead of the night? Uh, in the dead of night, I looked hard at the camp leader. I wonder, is she real? I don't have a single doubt about that girl, Yulia. She may not be human, but she exists. And what about Olga, the other pioneers? You know, I saw that cat girl. Sure, of course, she chuckled. Well, you don't have to believe me if you don't want to. I don't want to, and I don't believe you. It's your choice, I said in a tired voice and pushed my way into the cabin. Semyon, tomorrow, I didn't hear the rest of her words. There was only one thing to understand whether anything is up to me or not. Should I keep desperately reaching for that key, or the cat grow is the answer I've been looking for? Maybe the only thing left to do is to understand. No one ever said that the clue will be written straightforwardly in your own language. Though maybe I always- oh my god. What if everything is not real and I'm just dreaming? What if I just imagine what if, what if, what if, there's no cage, but what if? Well, no, I'm not a wizard, not an oracle, not a god. Oh my god, someone said something. Illusion is the first of all pleasures. Maybe my most successful skill was my illusions. Lines of thoughts connected one by one, ready to keep it all going until morning. But the safety device worked again and unplugged the whole system instead of reformatting my brain like last time. There we go with the, with the analogies. Huzzah. Oh, good lord, I'm so sick of hearing him speak with his complex analogies. Imagine how quickly this game would be. Like, you'd probably go from maybe 20 hours to like, maybe 10 or 8 if you, uh, if you just... Instead of coming up with an analogy for everything, uh, you just like, you know, we're a little, a little more matter of fact. If you just, if you just kind of shaved off the top of your s giant stack of analogies, imagine how much faster everything would be. Uh, Olga, it's seven in the morning. Why so early? I said in the direction of the other bed, opening my eyes, but there was no one there. The camp leader must have gone somewhere, gone, gone somewhere already. I rose with difficulty and looked myself over in the mirror. A common pioneer, nothing more. If someone showed me photos of the local residents with me among them, I would never recognize myself. The sun shined brightly outside. Nature seemed to laugh at me. As usual, he's feeling like nature is conspir con you know, con has a conspiracy against him. Conspiring, that's the word. The nature is conspiring against him. What a whack job. I walked slowly to the washstands. I met only a few pioneers on the way who were obviously in a hurry. Strange, where are they going at such an early hour? The cold water refreshed me a bit, and all the memories of the last few days poured into my head. Well, I should find Yulia and try to be very polite and proper this time. No kidding. After all, if you can't even understand a fellow human being without judging him by your own worldview and ideas, then how can you talk to something completely alien? How profound. Why should aliens or cat girls follow the same moral laws and draw the same logical conclusions as I do? I don't think anyone draws the conclusions you do, man. They may perceive the universe in a completely, yep. Uh, we don't think of killing, yep. Though it would be the old, yep. Alright, here we go. There was a rustle in the nearby bushes and I f saw a familiar pair of ears. I see you. Yulia reluctantly left her hiding place. Oh, my love! Please save me from Semyon, please. Come on. She snorted, pout. Come on. She snorted, pouting. Are you watching me? Yes. Is that not allowed? Well, it's probably allowed. I want to talk to you anyway. Really? Me too. Wh about what? I wondered. Something strange is happening here. Strange? What? I don't know. It's just, everyone's behaving differently than usual. Something has happened. First you, then all the others. What are you talking about? I don't understand. I don't know. I just feel it. And when I feel something, it always happens. Yo-Yo looked downcast and even a little afraid. At this time, she totally doesn't look like any kind of higher being. Okay, let's investigate it together. No, no one should see me. No one should see me. Come in in an hour. Until then. Come here in an hour. And until then... The sound of heavy footsteps, so footsteps sounded from the road to someone running. I turned around and saw Yulia, uh, Slavia approaching. Yulia disappeared into the forest as expected. Hi, I smiled. Yeah, hi. She looked really nervous, with her cheeks blushing, eyes sparkling, and braids all messy. Slavia, the other love of my life. Semyon, it's... Come with me, you'll see for yourself. What happened? Slavia's face were, wore such a pleading expression that I decided not to argue. She grasped my hand and dragged me to the square. The entire camp was probably there. As we turned the last corner, I looked past the crowd of pioneers who were standing in the direction of Genda, and there was... Uh... What the hell? <laughs> what, what the hell? <laughs> Whoa, that's a twist. I didn't expect that. Finally, something's happening. In a distance where before there were fields and forests, a city slowly started to appear. 
At first it was faded like it was made of smoke, but then it became more solid as if emerging from a fog. Sky City, I thought it once. But strange or not, there was nothing special about it. It's just a normal city. Plenty of those in the territory of our vast country. You could call it nor too normal, almost boring. What, do you expect it to have like, what, do you expect it to look, to look like Las Vegas? Like, it's just a city, dude. A city you would never pay attention to when passing by in a car or flying over it with a plane. But to see such a thing here and now in the camp, lost in the vast fields and forests and in another dimension, Oh, good God. Even a cat girl is not that strange compared to this. Slavia kept squeezing my hand tightly. Pioneers whispered around us as if afraid to speak in a loud voice. Afraid that the illusion would disappear or even the opposite. It would become more real, crash the little the little uh, camp beneath it. Uh, but the city stayed in place like a white cliff rising above a valley. There was nothing special about it. We get it, nothing special. You could make out, you couldn't make out people or cat or cars from this distance. But I was sure that the city is teeming with its own life, independent from our camp. I wonder if someone there got up. Yep. I indeed, it seemed like something flashed on one of the tallest buildings. He, he's like, I wonder if someone with binoculars can see us. That's what he said. But with like, you know, 94 more words. Uh, but wait a minute, binoculars. According to my estimations, they were two, two to three kilometers to the city. So if I went to understand, if I want to understand something right now, then I need binoculars or a spyglass. I ran to Olga. Do you see that too? Yes, of course. He replied as if strained. I need binoculars or a spyglass. The camp leader stopped watching the faraway city for a moment and looked at me uncomprehendingly. Binoculars? Yeah, go to the cybernetics club. There should be some. I darted off and rushed to the directions of the club's building. Electronic and Shirk were tinkering with something as usual, and they looked as if they knew nothing about the weird stuff happening in the camp. Binoculars, quick! I shouted, I shouted, trying not to lose my breath. What is it? Haven't you seen it? Uh, ah, oh, damn, you're sitting here with your robots like owls. Do you need binoculars or a spyglass? Or do you have, not do you need. I pronounce each word slowly like a caveman who just learned how to speak. Can you calmly explain what this is all about? No time to explain. Give me the binoculars. Hurry to the square. The young cybernetic cyberneticists didn't keep arguing with me, and in a minute they were standing with the rest of the pioneers as I used the binoculars to carefully examine the city, which appeared from God knows where. At first glance, there was nothing special about it. He literally have already said that. Give those to me. The camp leader snatched the binoculars from my hands. So, is that your world? I turned around and saw Yulia standing next to me. You said no one should see you. Yeah, but she was lost in thought. No one sees me right now. The pioneers didn't pay any attention to the strange girl with cat ears, too occupied by watching the far off city. Do you know what that is and why? No. She answered with a short pa after a short pause. There was nothing like this before, nothing at all. And what was there? Well, you came and then left and came again. And what did you do all that time? I told you before, I was preparing supplies for the winter. I totally couldn't understand. Does Yulia really not consider the situation even a little bit strange? Or is she just good at role playing? However, who would need to put on such a show for my benefit alone? I'm not, uh, I'm nothing but a guinea pig in a cage. I, d I don't believe you. You should, you should know something. You should really let it go, dude. She doesn't know shit. Let it go. Semyon, I turn to the camp leader. I have no idea what this is all about, but it looks very strange. I, we should call the police. Why? Olga reacted in the usual way like a normal person would in such a situation. I t what is it? Are they going to arrest the city? I turned back to Yulia to triumphantly inform her about it, but the camp, the cat girl had already disappeared. What can it be? The camp leader said quietly, not addressing anyone. I didn't know if I should tell her about myself, about the future, about traveling to the past. How do I know that that city really is from my time? Could it be just, just another illusion and the behavior of pioneers is just a part of it? And if it isn't? This? I didn't manage to say anymore. Cool, cool! Uh, Ulyana shouted, appearing from nowhere. Let's go check it out. Oh yeah, they must be expecting us. Wait a moment, we should think it over first. Lena, wow, but what's happening? The whole cast is here. Uh, Lena came up to us but didn't say anything. What do you think, Semyon? Slavia asked and stared at me as if expecting an immediate answer. And actually, why should what uh, why should what I think about it matter? What is the difference between me and them which makes me all-knowing? Especially considering you know less than them. What does it matter that I'm new to this world? The things that are happening are as obscure to me as any other local. I have no idea. Indeed, let's go and see for ourselves. It doesn't seem to be too far. But it's dangerous. Isn't sitting here dangerous too? Lena said shyly. All the pioneers in the camp leader looked at her, looked at her uncomprehendingly. Well, I mean... If the city has appeared so suddenly, something else could happen too. And we... She seemed to be getting completely confused, so she stopped talking. Well, she's right, Alyssa said in a, in a lazy voice. I certainly don't understand what this is all about, but I'm not going to just sit and wait until something happens. Uh, so, if no one else is going to... And me and me! Oyana interrupted her. Well, what then? What if it's just an illusion? Then we don't then, then we don't lose anything. I was a bit surprised by the locals' urge to find out the nature of the phenomenon, because before, they'd avoided any conversation related to my appearance in this world. Maybe it's a riddle inside of a riddle? Like, two enclosed, like, yep, here's the analogy. 
However, if it is true, then I should be located on the boundary, not knowing anything about one or the other. Olga was doubtful. Everyone else waited for her approval or strict prohibit prohib pro before she said no. Nothing surprising about that. In the life of the camp, organized as oh my god, the text, please no. She was yep, she was she was something. This may be the right time to start acting with confidence. I think we should go and check it out. How long should I sit here trying to look for some answers? Where do I find him? The canteen? The, in the canteen, camp leader's cabin, near the Genda statue. I have nothing to do here, especially when such an opportunity comes across. What do you mean nothing to do here? You have the cat girl here. But Olga, Olga shyly objected. What if we already, what if we're already dead or something? I had to motiv motivate the others in some way, but I decided not to tell them about myself. How's that? Dead. An expression of terror filled Lena's face. I'm not talking literally, but anything could happen. We can't tell for sure what's gonna, what's going on here, so any theory has to be considered. Lena started crying and Slavia tried to comfort her. It's even more fun that way. And here is Ilyana, for whom even death itself may not be a good reason to act calmly. We should go in any case, Alyssa said cheerfully. I turned around and saw Shirk and Electronic. Well, we'd better stay here. Try to measure it. My calculations. I see. I didn't actually expect any help from these two. Then you, then you should get ready. Prepare everything you may need. Olga started to busy around. Flashlights, warm clothes, walkie-talkie. You, you have a, you have a walkie-talkie in the club? She addressed the cyberneticists. They nodded in the affirmative. All right, expedition time. Let's let's go check out the city. In half an hour, the investigation team gathered at the square. Me, Alyssa, Lena, Slavia, and, and Olyana. I can't believe it. Like the whole cast is here. I was given quite a heavy backpack, packed with warm clothes, flashlights, other necessities, and, it, and in my hands, a short wave walkie-talkie. I could certainly manage to walk uh, those two or three kilometers wearing it on my shoulders, but not any. Di but why not distribute items among everyone? Because you're the one dude. Suck it up. Well, you know. I dropped the backpack on the ground to look to the camp leader. I'm the only man here, and you, you, and you immobilize me. Everyone should carry their own share. Oh, what a baby. The girls hesitated. The first one to come into the backpack was Olyana. She took a flashlight and a warm jacket. Grousing. I don't know, complaining. The rest of them followed her example. I didn't expect such boldness from myself, and expect even less for them to agree without question. Even the local pioneers may try to behave logically in critical situations. Yeah, he says logically. You're the dude. You should be. A, you should want to take it. That's the other thing. Not only is he an, an irritating person, he's a horrible man. As a man. Uh, after a couple of minutes, we were at the camp's gates. I hope you understand that I can't go with you. I have to look after the others. It's all right. We. Uh, you don't need to explain. I didn't count on Olga's help, especially as there was some truth in her words. Good luck. And don't forget that you have the radio. Yes, ma'am. The summer sun scorched us mercilessly. The warm sweater in the bag seemed to kind of a mockery. I'd give it and all the flashlights and even the walkie-talkie away in exchange for the camp leader's Panama hat and a bottle of water. And why didn't anyone think of him bringing a water flask? Oh, and there was less and less clothes on Alyssa with every passing minute, if we're lucky. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's have a rest. I slowed down, shaded my eyes with my palm, and looked in the direction of the city, which was right in front of us. It didn't seem to be an inch closer. Why not head straight to it? Oliana sounded annoyed. How's that? Straight through the forest and fields? Yeah. I don't mind. Even that would be better than making detours. It would be quicker to go by road. Look, it, it makes a turn there. Uh, Slavia tried to reason with her. Do as you wish. Alyssa flopped down on the grass by the roadside. I'll take a break. We settled in the shade of a small bush near the power line. I took the binoculars and looked at the city. The multi-storied buildings still shine in the distance. Why aren't we getting closer? Or is it the heat that's creating an optical illusion? A nearby bush rustled lightly. I turned around and saw a pair of cat ears sticking out of it. My love! Wait, I'll be back in a moment. Well, having walked around the bushes, I gestured to Yulia to follow me, and only after making sure we had enough distance from the others that I know that I wouldn't that they wouldn't see us did I speak. So, are you watching us? Well, of course. I'm interested, too. Ah, I see. And you surely don't know what waits us there, do you? Surely don't, she smiled. And you have no idea why... Or if you, or, and you have no idea why don't you get any closer to the city? Actually, I do. Yulia replied calmly. Why, then? Because you can't leave the, Because you can't leave this place. I sighed heavily, as usual, and leaned against the lone tree. She's actually right, dude. Do you, like, do you recall the last one where you walked east a long time and you came back around and then you were at the other side of the camp? Yeah, you can't leave. The, the city is merely an illusion. There's no there's no reaching it, dude. Maybe it's the right time to tell me everything? She got lost in thought. It was different before. You came, and then, and then you left, and you came again, and then... And even if you went so far, it was all the same, and that city is your world. Uh, why do you always refer to it as my world? Because it's not it's not of this place. Uh, Yulia was exasperated. And what is this place? Can you be any clearer? Dude, you're, she's not going to give you the GPS coordinates. You're going to have to suck it up. I certainly wasn't mad at her. It seemed to me that the cat girl wasn't hiding anything important. But uh, but she did just not understand the questions or didn't under, didn't know the answers. No kidding. I don't know. 
All right, let's do it step by step. How long have you been here? Always. Always is too complex a definition for a human. Though you are probably not human. I was lost in thought. And what am I doing here? You were always here too. How is that possible? Did I duplicate myself? Because I don't remember anything like that. Did it ever occur to you that maybe your memory gets like white the next time around, moron? God. Well, is it you? It's you, and it's and it's like it's not you. There are many of you. And are you the only one? I am the only one. Yo-Yo smiled am something and waved her tail. One of uh one of all my parallel selves, something like that. So, are you like omnipotent? I didn't manage to find a better word for it. I don't know. Do you have any supernatural abilities? Can you fly through fireballs, teleport? I can make supplies for the winter. <laughs> she replied in a, in a serious tone. Don't, uh, let's consider that a no. And what is the purpose of all this? I don't know. And if I was rather calm at first, then all of these I don't know, started, I started to lose my temper. Once again, not her fault. You know, Semyon, I heard Slavia shouting. I turned around, and when I looked back at the place where Yilya was standing, she was already disappeared. There you go again. I gnashed my teeth and went back to the girls. He is such an asshole. I hate him. We had been walking for several hours, but the city still was in the same place. I wasn't getting even a meter closer to or further away from us. I told you we were going straight to it. Shut up. I don't understand. Could it really be an illusion? Lena, who hadn't uttered a word before, said, No, even an illusion in the desert disappears if you get close enough to it. Probably. So what now? Alyssa said, outraged. I'm sick and I'm tired of this. Let's go, let's go back. Go if you want. No one's stopping you. Slavia snarled at her. Ooh. Everyone looked at her in surprise. It was really strange to hear such things from the role model pioneer. Why are you always so unsatisfied with everything? If you don't like it, get your ass back. Like I asked you. God damn. Wow. Slavia was not having it. Woo. Like, man, she, she could lay, lay down the law. Alyssa said it certainly. Well, she's right. Lena cut into the conversation. I'm fed up with your whining. Good lord. Oyana got scared and hid behind me. Oh, you're just here to look at, to look better at someone else's expense. Sure, it's easier to stand out with me in the background. Oh, God, what's happening? <laughs> They're, it's devolving into war. What's happened? Oh, trust me. You won't be able to stand after what I'll do to you now. Oh, God. Leta rushed at Alyssa, but Slavia stood between them. Hell no. Let me go first. What? Stop it. Oyana yelled in tears. I had no idea what to do in such a situation, but I couldn't let them fight. However, I didn't have to interfere. Yulia jumped out from nowhere, got between the girls, and hissed in rage. It shouldn't be like this. This is not right. You must not act like that. It is not your purpose. Good lord. The girls jumped back. Al jumped back. Alyssa squealed. Slavia adopted some kind of fighting position. And Lena was holding a knife, which she'd pulled from God knows where. What the? What's happening? Who are you? Who is it? Who is it? What is it? I couldn't tell if she was dressing Yulia or me. Wait. What's happening? I stood between them and the cat girl. I can explain everything. It's like I'm making excuses. To who and for what? She should explain everything. Hey, it's see, it's cause instinctually you are you are somewhere deep down a man. And even if your brain and the rest of you complains, I can't be a good person, please no. Deep down your soul knows what should be done. That's why you defended her like as of reflex. That's why. Your soul knows even if the rest of you is worthless. The girls relaxed a bit. Well, have you all heard the legends of the cat girl? So this is... Yulia kept on hissing, but more quietly. She knows, Slavia said coldly. She knows what the city is. She knows everything. She, she knows nothing. I, I know nothing, Yulia confirmed. Did you ask her properly? Alyssa stood up and cracked her knuckles. Oh, God. I think we're going to have to fend Yulia from all the four of these people. What the hell are you doing? Stop it once. First the bus, the camp, then you, then her, now the damn city. I started yelling, gritting my teeth, sparks probably flying from my eyes. Enough is enough. I have had it with this damned uncertainty. Either you explain what's happening here or I won't move an inch from here. Kill me if you want. I don't care. Do you think I can put up with everything? That I'd pretend that there's nothing happening and I understand nothing? Regardless of what you do, I don't care. Everything has a limit. I finished my speech more calmly, having lost my breath from yelling. Oh, Lord. The blood hammered in my temples. The world became darker for a moment. Then, it, then the next, it painted itself with unimaginable colors. The girls looked at me with surprise and even with fear. Yulia stopped hissing and again looked indifferent to everything around her. All right. All right, everyone back up. I declared and started walking, taking the, uh, what? I declared and started to walk along the road in the direction of the city, which moved a step closer away from every step I took. No one followed me. Yup. Yeah. The sun started setting beyond the horizon and the city, still visible in the east, was little by little being absorbed by mist. 
I couldn't tell where it is really located because the fields ahead were disrupted by forests, but its buildings still rose above them as the central element in the diorama. The city stood mute as if... Good lord. Uh, look, according to my calculations, I'd walked much more than two or three kilometers, which was the th theoretical distance to the city. I stopped to rest in a shade a couple of times, and the evening coolness became my savior. However, there could be no city at all, and I'm just running like a hamster on a wheel, feeling like the exhaustion of the distance I covered, but with my destination somewhere outside the cage. I remembered yesterday's thoughts about the key hanging right under the ceiling. Yeah, the, like the, the nine-page, like, you know, you know, thesis about keys and stools. It would certainly be useful to me now. Maybe there'd be no answers all. I'm too tired even to think about it, Luck luckily for all of us. Plus, that enraged outburst with the girls. I mean, to be fair, they were going for blood so quickly. Ah, screw it. I sat down on the side of the road, rising a little dust storm from the ground, which covered me and made me cough. You deserve it. Tears filled my eyes. Just go back to the damn camp, dude. Oh, my love! When I opened them again, Yulia stood before me. There seem to be advantages to being a cat. You move much faster than humans. Where are you going? She asked, paying no attention to my words. I'm going right there. I waved my hand in the direction of the city. Why? Where, where are the others? They went back to the camp. I see. So wh wh uh, why are you going there? Because I got lost in thought. What else is there to do? What'll happen if I just sit here? Nothing. That's what I mean. Yulia looked at me intently and sat beside me. I'd like to help. She suddenly said in a quiet voice, then help. I don't know how. Tell me about the city, about the world. Why am I here? For the love of God, she doesn't know. I'm so sick. I don't know. Why? Well, I mean, it's always like was like that. You came to the camp on a bus, you spend a week here, and then regardless of the outcome, everything repeats. And and there are many of you. They're all different. What do you mean different? Not like you. You are the only one like this. That's why I can talk to you and the others you just don't just don't understand. What don't they under what don't what don't they understand? They disappear sometimes. Yulia kept talking, ignoring my question. That's the old, that's the way things should be. I have no idea why, but they should. They do not return here after se after seven days. But the new ones come, and who are just like the previous ones. Everyone in is in the same in the beginning, almost the same. See, I think I think that that's her point right there. I it's not that she's saying that there are many of you. It's I think that it's just her acute way of speaking doesn't describe it in this crazy scientific way that our you know our dipstick. Semyon wants, but I think what she's saying is it repeats. So basically, each Semyon doesn't learn anything. So they repeat. So the when it the seven days starts over, he's the same idiot he was at the beginning the first time. So by the end, he bails and it's over. It repeats. He didn't learn a thing. Whereas this guy, ours, seemed to be like he learned a little something from the previous iteration. So she feels like she can speak to him. That's why. That that that's what I'm guessing she's trying to say. The difference has come after some time, especially when they have understood that everything should repeat itself again and again. Does it mean I am destined to walk in circles too? I don't know. This time is different. Why does it all happen? Who are these others? She looked at me uncomprehendingly. But they're you. What do you mean, me? You and all the, you and all those others. She groused, trying to find the right words. You are you are all the same. So are they clones of me or something? What are clones? Copies. Like two identical mushrooms you prepare for the winter. There are no two identical mushrooms, Yulia said seriously. Imagine that there are. Identical mushrooms. Maybe. I don't know. God, this is a nightmare. I put my head on my knees and closed my eyes. I don't know why everything is so difficult for you to comprehend. We sat in silence for several minutes. I really wanted to understand what was on Yulia's mind. After all, even if she really knows nothing, then she should at least have some thoughts about the things that are happening. Okay, what should I do? I asked in a serious tone. She looked at me uncomprehendingly again. What would you advise me to do? I don't know. What would you do in my place? Me? In your place? But that would never happen, she laughed loudly. You are you and I am me. Just imagine it. You have in your mind that you should have an imagination. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything. Why not? Because it is the way the it is the way of things. It's better and less troubling this way. So is it less troubling to sit in this camp and wait for the endless repetitions? Yes. I couldn't agree with that. I just couldn't. As long as it's in my power to change something or even try to, I have to act. He is such an idiot. I rose up from the ground and marched towards the distant city, visible in the crimson rays of the faraway sunset. The road took a sudden turn at last. The buildings, which were rising above the trees before, disappeared from my sight, and the country landscape in front of me was replaced by industrial suburbs. Wow. It was dark already. Scattered bright lights filled the, filled the sky, still visible from where I stood, but disappearing above the, above the city, which was full of distant lights from windows and street lamps. A silent dark night rained, rained behind me, interrupted only by... Some light noises of bugs and birds. The road I walked seemed stranger. It was empty, as if deserted, used by neither cars nor people. Like a narrow path leading away from this world into another one. Yulia walked in silence beside me all this time. 
Why are you here? I asked quietly. I have to be with you. Why? It's strange. The city always was on the right side. Now it's in front of us. She ignored my question. Not much stranger than everything else. I've walked about 10 or 20 kilometers and it's still so far away. Far away? We, we may never reach it. I stopped and tried to imagine what awaits me there. In that city, in that city similar to my home one, is the city similar to my home one? Or is it architecture like? What's its architect? What is it architecture like? Who lives there? God, my stutter is killing me. And why did I have to con why did I come to the conclusion that there are, that there are people there? If it isn't just an illusion, one of the lame tricks of is it one of the lame tricks of this sick world? Even Yulia says that she's seeing all this for the first time. Suddenly, the walkie-talkie I still had with me made a nasty sound, and the agitated voice of Olga said, "Semyon, do you copy? Semyon." After a moment, I pushed the button and answered, "Yeah." Semyon, so much is happening. Come back at once. What? What is it? What happened? I asked without much interest. Oh, he's like, what is it? What happened? Whatever, idiot. The camp leader, the pioneers, the whole camp was left far behind, not just a dozen kilometers, much further. Everything that happened in the last few days lost any meaning, like a nightmare you start to forget. Now, when there's a real world in front of me, I had no choice but to believe when I reach the city, everything will end. Semyon, hurry. There's no time to explain. It's a disaster. Probably murder, based upon what happened a second ago with all the girls. Anyway, the static grew much, much stronger, drowning out the camp leader's voice. Will you go? You'll get ass agitated. Where? Back there? No. Why would I? But you want me to go back? I don't. I don't know. What do you want? Really? What do I want? To get to the city? What I've been doing the whole day? Or something more global? To escape from the world? And what if something bad happened actually back? What, what if something actually bad happened back there? That that thought sent a flash of pain in my head. Something happened to Slavia, to Lena, to Yana, even to Alyssa. And why is the question? Why should I? Why would I care? Not bothering me now. But yeah, I do care. Wow, you have you have a soul. I can't believe it. He has a soul, everybody. A sense of right and wrong that even he can't avoid forever. I got so much closer with them recently. I had really got used to the life at the camp. But what'll happen to the city? Would it disappear as suddenly as it, as it appeared? And what if everything went the way Yulia you'll, you'll described? No, I, I should not allow it. The walkie-talkie hissed, but I didn't want to turn it off in case I heard something again. So what have you decided? I had to make a decision. Whoa. Uh... Interesting. Before making this choice. Uh, okay. Okay. Pause. Save. So, let's see. One of them says, okay, so it says to go back. So, we are going to go back. But, it also says save before making the choice. Which, of course, I make sure we're going to do. Alright. We're saved here. Now, let's go back. Okay. I forced myself to speak. What? Yulia was surprised. Okay. Let's go back. Weren't you expecting this answer? She smiled cunningly. No. Why do you... No. No. Why do you think that? Because you always say that everything repeats itself after seven days and I can't get out of here. So, we'll check it out. Oh, check it out? Shouldn't we check out that city for starters? It's up to you to decide. I looked at her intently. Something seemed to have changed in Yulia, but I couldn't understand what it was exactly. I've already decided, I mumbled. Then we should go. The cat girl made her way across the field in the direction of the forest with confidence. Hey, wait, where are you going? It'll take less time. Less time? The thought started spitting in my head furious, furiously, merging with one which probably wouldn't be a pleasant one. So all this time, I caught up with her in two strides and grabbed her tail. Did you know all this at this time? That I could go straight there without wandering for the whole day? Yulia hissed furiously and bared her teeth. I let go of her tail. Yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty freaking stupid. No, I mean, I might have known, but you have nothing to do there. In the city? Yes. Why? I don't know. It shouldn't be that way. It's not right. I can't explain. I just know. I turned around and looked at, the, looked at the distant lights. I wonder, could things get any worse? Is it not that everything is really bad right now, but what if the city doesn't disappear? And yeah, what if, what if, what if? All right, let's go. Yeah, that was really stupid. We walked through the forest almost all the way, crossing forest edges and across just a few times. Yulia seemed extremely satisfied with something. Would you explain what's happening to you? Everything is just so unusual. Because it's not like this before? Everything repeated itself after seven days? Yeah, I've heard it already. She just smiled in return. I wonder what happened back at the camp. Look, the camp gates were visible in the distance beyond the trees. We started to walk faster. Let's find out what happened. Is it murder and mayhem and death? It was clear that something was wrong. The camp seemed abandoned. I could assume that pioneers went to bed, but there were no lights except the street lamps. And why isn't Olga waiting for, me, waiting for us here with a biohazard squad? She said on the radio that something had happened. A strange anxiety had overwhelmed me at once. I looked at Genda and there, and, and there, the city. There's no city. Yulia seemed to be surprised too, surprised for real, so I didn't jump at her with questions. Which you shouldn't have anyway, dumbass, because clearly she doesn't know anything. 
Uh, having reached the camp leader's cabin, I stopped for a moment in hesitation. Images of possible, possible events flashed before my eyes. However, I quickly pulled myself together. This is just some nonsense. There was nothing to support the idea of science fiction story turning into a bloody thriller. Uh, well, it, it, it has happened before in some iterations. I desperately pulled the door handle and entered the cabin. No one was inside. Well, no point staying here then. I rushed to the cabin of Liliana and Alyssa. I'm assuming most of everything is going to be deserted. And they'll all be like hiding at the old camp or something. Without dwelling on my thoughts, I knocked on the door, but only silence responded. I walked around the cabin and looked in the window. It was empty. Well, that doesn't mean anything. They might have gone somewhere. I ran to the canteen. I was about to say that would be that would that'd be where I would check next. Maybe everyone had a late dinner. However, the door was locked. I went back to the square and dropped into a bench exhausted. Enough enough running, maybe? Yulia, who had followed me in silence, asked without much interest. Well, true, but why did I start panicking? Though, what if something actually had happened? Well, I'm well, I'm hungry. I'll go back. I'll go look for something to eat. I didn't object, and in a moment, Yo-Yo silently disappeared in the night. It's either some stupid prank, which was hard to believe, or everyone really ha has disappeared somewhere. The event itself isn't any stranger than my arrival here, or the mysterious city which showed up and then vanished. But I got used to the camp and its inhabitants, and now it's such a twist. I'd more or less adapted to my new circumstances, and now something has happened. Yeah, more or less adapted. I cursed and covered my face with my hands. I would probably have sat like that for several minutes until tears started to flow, but... My eardrums were almost broken by a loud noise. It sounded like a thunderclap. So where did it come from? There wasn't a cloud in the sky. Oh god! It's Shadow Pioneer! It's been so long since we've seen him! I opened my eyes and saw someone in front of me. You! You! I uttered, stammering. A thunderstorm rumbled in the clear sky. The lightning flashes occurred. The face of the man be standing before me obscured. Sorry. Why the sad face, Semyon? Who are you? I shouted. Calm down. You don't have to get so tense. Nervous cells don't regenerate, you know. My first thought was to run, but my body didn't respond to the idea. The lightning was still flashing brightly, and there was no chance to see a pi the pioneer's face clearly. However, I was sure that I'd heard that voice before. It's because you have. This was in your ending. This is so crazy that it's actually it's like a, it's actually a repeating story. This is the second time something has happened that it referenced his good ending. That's awesome. Who are you? I asked in a quieter tone. Perhaps you have more appropriate questions? Where has everyone disappeared to? They played their parts and we don't need them anymore. Parts? What parts? Their parts. And what about the city? What city? I wasn't sure whether I caught a trace of surprise in his voice or if I was just hearing things. The city. There. I waved my hand in the, in the direction of Genda. Ah, you're talking about... He went silent for a moment. It's your fault. I don't understand. It's because you don't try hard enough. The pioneer raised his voice. I, I, you just don't need to think. Just think. Or you just need to think. Just think. How long have you been here? Five days, six, or 26? Six, probably. Six? Why six? Are you sure about six? Why are you here? Because you counted the number of dust and dawns, or because you looked at the date on your mobile phone? I don't know. The pioneer before me lost his temper. I had no clue what he was talking about. Six? Okay, let it be six, he said calmly. And haven't you been here before? No. Are you sure about that, too? I don't know. And what if I say that you've been here before? I had absolutely no idea how to react to his words. Something was happening to me, like on the first day here. Something inexplicable, terrifying, and maybe dangerous. But I don't remember. Why do you have to remember? He fell silent, almost lost in thought. Somehow you really don't remember. Well, I'll tell you then. I could hardly hear his words through the sound of thunder. My, my eyes were getting teary because of the lightning flashes, but I was afraid to even blink and give this pioneer a chance to, dis to, to disappear. He might really tell me how I turned up here. This is not the first time you've been here. I don't know how many laps you've had, but it doesn't matter. But why? I don't remember anything. You shouldn't You shouldn't remember. You shouldn't. You should not, he shouted. Sorry. I decided not to interrupt him. Yes, it is your first time here, he continued in a calmer voice, but this time is special. It'll be the last one for you. I couldn't understand what his definition of the word last was. Will I get out of here and return to my normal life, or does it mean that I'll die here? Well, that's only my opinion. He went silent for a long time. I decided to ask a question at last. How do you know all this? How? Let's say that I'm your brother in misfortune, and... An explosion sounded nearby. It almost seemed like lightning struck a tree just a dozen meters away from me. I instinctively covered my head with my hands and fell beneath the bench. I don't know how long I was lying there, but by the time I had slightly recovered from the shock, the thunderclaps had stopped. I opened my eyes. Yulia was standing where the pioneer had been standing before. So, you've met your colleague. She smiled and offered a hand. Shocked, uh, shocked I didn't know what to do and I kept lying down. How long are you planning to stay there? I stood up with difficulty. Who was that? If I had chose the lesser evil, then I would rather trust Yulia than that mysterious pioneer. Lesser evil? Ah, screw you! She's the good guy, like you, idiot. Well, how should I put it? She got lost in thought. 
you know, you're not the only one. To be precise, you are the only one here. But there are more. Uh, there are more of the same camp. Lots of them, and there are more of the same you. A lot of them too. I didn't understand anything. Some of them can appear in the other places, like this pioneer, for example. So you knew all that, but you didn't tell me. You didn't ask. She shrugged her shoulders. Should I be afraid of him? I don't think you should. Although, should I? Should I or should I not? My anxiety grew. I doubt that he can take a physical form, but you should be careful with him. I received so much information at once that I would need more than a week to comprehend it all. Wow, you must like, it's like you're running on a, like a Windows 98 or something. Though keeping it all in mind, I understood that this information doesn't explain anything at all. I, I feel like this, yeah, like, need all week, seriously? Like I, like, I feel like you're running on like the world's first computer. So there are lots of people like me. Yes, but how did I, we get here? I don't have an exact answer for that question. I just know that it is you who came here. Just one person came here, to be more precise. Yulia now looked nothing like that strange girl with animal ears who was sprinkling sugar on mushrooms. She was the exact opposite. She has there was confidence in her eyes and even some arrogance, and no sign of her earliest child childish infant infant inf infantism, like you know childlikeness naivete. Who are you then? Sorry, I have to drink. I've not been drinking enough the last few days, and the dehydration is showing. Normally, I drink like a fish. Oh, sorry, I've just been clicking, not paying attention. Who are you then? Me? Yes. Honestly, I have no idea. I stared at her with an open mouth. How's that? You have no idea. The only thing I remember is that is that I was here. I don't remember anything else. Like, there was nothing else. I must watch you. All of you. And I exist in all camps simultaneously. After recovering from my shock, I continued. And you don't know who you are? Bingo. She laughed. But that's impossible. Well, I would understand amnesia, but all powerful beings can't have it. And who told you that I'm all powerful? Are you not? Actually, I'm capable of nothing. I can't interfere with the natural flow of events. But didn't you know or see? I know a bit of something. I know a bit of I know a bit of something. But what will well, you know, I had no idea how to, how to put the question. Nothing. Usually seven days pass and one of you leaves the camp. I would even say disappears. Then a new one comes and everything repeats. The number of camps is consistent is constant. We spoke about this before. Disappears where? I don't know. That can't be possible. You told me so much, and do you think that I'm hiding something from you? No. I said exhausted. Or he's like, no. I said exhausted. I guess I shouldn't doubt her words, at least for now. Maybe they don't disappear. Uh, they just go for another lap? I can't rule out that possibility, but I don't think they do. And what is something to me now? And what is... What the, what the freak was that? And what is happening to me now then? I can't explain this either, but I know for sure that this was meant to happen. And this is something unusual. The course of events is different this time. The pioneer spoke about it too. He might know more than me. But how should I understand all of this? I sighed deeply and covered my head with my hands. I think we'll find out very soon. Okay, but finally, who are you then? Yoya powdered her lips. I told you before. So, do you have memory loss then? No. She thought for a moment. I don't have a memory at all, probably. There was no me before this camp. I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't exist. But, I didn't finish the sentence. Taking into account everything that happens here, there was a, there was a lot I could only make assumptions about. And that means I could not be surprised by a girl with animal ears. Are you something like an observer here? Probably. I think that this world is, is the most appropriate. And what about all the inhabitants disappearing after playing their parts? What are you talking about? The pioneer said that. Parts. She moved her ears in a funny way, making me smile. There, there is something to it, because only you are, only you are real here. I mean you, that pioneer, and all the other ones. How's that? I told you. I don't know. Or I don't know. You can assume that I uh, appeared here with a limited amount of knowledge, nothing more. There are things that I am sure about, but there are things that I don't know more than no more than about you. What? Uh, there are things that I know no more about than you. Fine. On one hand, her words seem logical enough. If you can, if you can even talk about logic in such a situation. But what do you suggest we do next? To wait and see how things will turn out. Yeah, you can't change anything. I mumbled. Anyway, it's dinner time. She smiled merrily and waved her tail. Did you try to look for something? I didn't find anything. I had no time. I saw the lightning and I came back at once. Let's go. She went in the direction of the canteen. She'd better stick with me. It might be that there were no there was no pioneers at all. And if I wasn't the only one who can see him, or no pioneer at all. And if I wasn't the only one that can see him, then there would be less grounds to doubt my sanity, which was not feeling very secure lately. Yulia sat down on the table and looked at me. So? What? Dinner. Yeah, what about it? I yawned. The time was long past midnight. By the way, how did you open the canteen? You, you gotta have skills. No need to continue with this topic. Maybe it's better to go to sleep. Cook, now. She said in a direct, dictatorial, dictatorial, dic, dictatorial? Whatever. She said in a, in, a rough, in a rough, serious tone. Whatever. Me, I don't see anyone else around. 
Okay. I slowly walked towards the kitchen. Because of all the talk of food, I suddenly felt hungry. Dude, freaking same. I found a, cart a carton of eggs in the fridge and called out to Yulia. Hey, how about scrambled eggs? Well, maybe. I started cooking. Funny the way things turn out. Bizarre and incomprehensible events are happening to me, and yet I'm just standing here making dinner. Just hoping for the best. It's a typical Russian feature, yes. Nevertheless, I am quite sure that nothing bad will happen. And in, a, in case of unexpected problems, Yulia will protect me. Although she says that she does not know much, in a critical moment, I can certainly rely on her. There is simply no one no one else to count on. Just yesterday, nothing, nothing was up to me, but at least I had a slight idea what was happening. However, now, the only thing left to do is to comfortably lean back on a chair and wait for the installation to be finished. I added grated cheese, mayonnaise, salt, and pepper, and poured the well-stirred mass into the pan. And I also found a salami in the fridge and a loaf of bread on the shelf next to it. Soon, we were sitting in silence and eating scrambled eggs. Yummy, yummy. It's nothing special. Ordinary bachelor-style dinner. Never tried anything like this. Probably, probably better than mushrooms and nuts. That's enough, Yulia, Yulia answered angrily. When, when we finished dinner, I said, Tell me something about yourself, though you probably have nothing to tell. Probably. How long have you been here? I don't know. A long time. But are you mostly human? Well, very likely. Then how could you be at several places at the same time? It's hard to explain. I don't really understand it myself. Let's assume that here and now in front of you that I'm the only I'm the only one. I could accept such such an assumption. In the end, although the fact that Yulia has many faces with just one mystery among many others happening here, it was definitely not the main one. I feel like it's the main one. At least that's what I thought. Well, let's assume that and what do you well, well let's assume that. And what do you know about the world? I can read and write if that's what you mean, she laughed. No, not not exactly that. Do you know where this camp is located? No. Then maybe you know that I'm not from here, not from this time, not from this reality. Well, I know, but not not any details. And if I ask you what the year is, I can't answer. I took a deep breath and stared out the window. In general, you can assume that there are some things I know more about than you, but some I know less. So what should we do? As I told you before, just wait. Wait, and what are we going to do? What do you want to do? I don't know, but forgive me, I don't feel like climbing trees. Okay, okay, then maybe you could tell me something, something about yourself? Not now. As you wish, so what then? I don't know. Maybe just sit and wait. I don't mind. But that's so boring. I don't see any alternatives. So let's go. Come on. Uh, she thought for a while. I looked keenly at Yulia. Looks like she really finds everything happening here amusing. Moreover, the current situation doesn't seem strange to her. According to her, there's nothing unusual about it. You know, everything that's happening is not quite normal to me. I don't even understand why I'm not currently hiding somewhere under my bed, trembling at every sound. It turns out you are brave. Yeah, I, like I said, his soul down deep, deep down. He is, he is actually to some degree a man. The rest of him is a mess. But some deep down, there is some manly traits about him against his own will, as it turns out. I've got an idea. I looked at her with interest. Nope, I forgot it again. She scratched her cat ears. Uh, just remembered. Let's go swimming. Now I stared at her in disbelief. Maybe, maybe be better to go to sleep. Oh come on, she pouted. Dude, go swimming. Indeed, the day had been hot, and I was soaked with sweat. It's much easier to fall asleep in this heat when you're clean. It's easier to fall asleep any time when you're clean. Okay, let's go. Alright, there might be editing coming up in just a second. I don't know what's about to happen here. A few minutes later, we sat on the beach. I'm going to probably do a little more of a pause between sentences. It'll make it easier for me to edit. That way, I, that way, if there is an edit, I don't have to cut myself off like I've had to do several times in the previous few endings. I lazily sprawled on the sand and looked at the river. I immediately felt completely exhausted. You know, I don't actually like swimming. Meaning you don't know how to swim? Yulia sat next to me. Well, it's not that I don't know how. Anyway, that doesn't matter. The pioneers, fine. But how could the whole town disappear? I told you before. I don't know. Let's go swimming. I don't want to. I never like to reveal that I'm a lousy swimmer. Dude, it's not about how well you can swim, idiot. Go swimming. It's about, it's about the time you're going to spend with her, man. Come on. Oh, come on, stop it. You can splash in the water near the shore. Exactly! Okay, wait, I'll, I'll get my swimming trunks. But Yo-Yo seems to not hear me, and... Here comes the edit. Started to undress. Again, here comes the edit. Uh, you, uh, eh. What? Are you gonna swim like that? Yes. Anything wrong with that? No, definitely not. <laughs> I turned away at, right, at the right time. I mean, at the wrong time. Aren't you shy? I tried to speak as calmly as possible, but the reason I didn't look at her was because my face was burning rather than out of politeness. Yeah, that's more or less what I figured. Shy about who? You? She laughed. You, you, you know what? I turned around. I turned around. Yulia was already in the water up to her neck. Damn it! 
Come here. I decided that nothing bad will happen if I stayed in my underwear. I just I undressed and entered the water. Oh, it's cold. Move around. You'll get warm. Like me. She started to jump and wave her hands on the water. I still felt awkward. You've gone red, uh, Yulia said excitedly. Of course I am. Next to me is a naked girl, or at least a female humanoid. And? And that's enough. Hey, I can show this. All right, I'm okay with this. I turned around and at the same moment, I felt Yulia hug me. This, this is also part of your program? I understood that I was saying complete nonsense, but nothing more meaningful was coming to my head. What? Well, it's, you know, whoops, sorry. Uh, suddenly I realized that I was being hugged from behind by a naked omnipotent being, which is unable to exist in multiple realities simultaneously, which is able, not unable. My brain was instantly overloaded by errors about the lack of system resources. Here it is, a blue screen of death. Your whole brain is like that 100% of the time. My legs buckled and I started to go under the water. Yulia held me up. There's no need to drown yourself. She still, she was still hugging me. I, f it felt, uh, I felt it even stronger. Dude, and accept it! What, what are you gonna do? Swim, obviously. So that means you're not suggesting anything? I tried to say it with a calm expression, but I didn't, but it didn't turn out very well. Like what, for example? Well, even though you don't remember much, you essentially behave quite reasonably. So you should understand. Well, I don't, well, I don't know. She said, she said slyly. Suddenly, I felt something twisting around my thighs. Aha! Uh -huh, that's what I thought! I told you the edit's gonna be here any second. I can feel it. I can feel it. The cutoff is gonna be here. I tried to pull myself away, but Yulia held me tight. Why would you? <laughs> like, it's finally happening. She's like, despite the fact that you're an idiot, for some reason, she's being nice to you. God knows why. And like, accept it. Like, this is a good thing, bro. This is the best thing to happen to you the whole week, okay? So suck it up, especially considering, like, I guess canon-wise, this is his second time around with this iteration of Semyon, because the first one was his good ending, right? So this is your second time. So this is the best thing to happen to you in two weeks, I would say. Also, motion, uh, motion physics in the water are very different from on the land. It's just my tail. A tail. Don't you find it strange that you have it at all? Dude, have you never seen an anime? This is a great thing. Come on. What? You don't like my tail? If you step on my tail, if you step on my tail, then you're going to get hurt. Wait a minute. I paused for a moment trying to rephrase the thought I just had. So you've seen that series too? What series? The one you just quoted. It's just... She suddenly stopped and thought. Don't, don't people say that? Some kind of saying. So you don't know where it's from? No. And who cares? Yulia laughed. Her tail continued to probe my body. Wait a minute. I don't... I, I guess she was quoting something. Even I don't know what that's from necessarily. Could it be that Yulia still has memories about her time before the camp? Maybe they're hidden somewhere or suppressed. She got that quote somehow. Of course, maybe she heard it from one of the pioneers. But isn't that too early for that show to even exist? What show? The only conclusion is that Yulia seems to be a pioneer in this camp, the same as I. <laughs> just, a more, just a more mysterious one. What happened next... What, what happened next... What... What happened next happened by itself. Even if I was going to do, even if what I was going to do was dangerous, in the end, I'm a red-blooded man. Ha ha! He finally decided he's gonna be a man. All right. Again, the edit's gonna be any second. I can feel it. <laughs> ha ha! That's what I thought. <laughs> yep, that's what I thought. That is exactly what I thought. Well, you can finally say, "Hang on, sorry, my phone's going off. I have to make sure it's nothing important." Anyway, um, sorry. So, at, yeah, so obviously, uh, things are getting real, as you might imagine. At that moment, Yulia was not an all-powerful being to me. I was holding an ordinary girl in my arms. And we, and finally, dude, freaking finally. Man, you're like, you're so, almost such a disappointment as a man. I brought the sleeping Yulia to my cabin. She was surprisingly light. What? That doesn't surprise me. She's like, a, she's like, you know, she's like a, a buck twenty at best. Like, not even that, probably. I put her on the bed, uh, collapsed beside her, and closed my eyes. But all my attempts to get to sleep failed. I felt a terrible thirst. Quietly as not to wake Yulia up, I got out of bed, pulled on my shorts, and went outside. I would, I would like, accept it. I would not want to take a chance at leaving her alone. On the way to the wash stands, I thought about everything that happened. I didn't care about whether it was right or, wrong, or right or not. No, that wasn't the main issue. I decided that I just didn't want to have any other choice in this situation. More and more important are the possible consequences. Even if Yulia was a bit was a little different than me, we could say she was closer to who or what was behind all this. Just because she knows more than me, which means, however blindly assuming or drawing conclusions about anything is a difficult task in this camp. I was sure of that by now. 
I quenched my thirst and washed myself. I was going to the camp leader's cabin, uh, whistling a piece from Pierre Ghent by Greg. I don't even know what that is. When someone called out to me. How did you? No! No! Don't don't do this to me now! My wife who is in the cabin, don't take her away! I jumped on the spot, turned and saw the silhouette of the Shadow Pioneer. Which is what I'm calling him, because how else would you describe that? Of the Shadow Pioneer. There was no chance of seeing his face clearly in the darkness. Told you, Shadow. So it's you again. Who, me? Uh, not in the sense that I am the I am the one who you've, who you've already seen, but in the sense of who in fact I am. Oh, so he's like... You know, he's like gray shadow pioneer. <laughs> so he's kind of him, but not really. I don't understand. He's, so he's a different teleporting one. I remembered that Yo-Yo told me that he can't do me any physical harm and I calmed down a bit. Oh, uh, whatever. Besides, I seen how you are getting it on back there. Hey, jerk, don't you spy on us. That was private. I mean, it was on the beach, but it was private somehow. That gave me the heebie-jeebies. No matter how fantastic a situation is, it's always frustrating when you're caught doing something so intimate. Exactly. Didn't anyone, didn't, didn't, didn't anyone ever tell you it's not nice to spy on people? You're upset. No, why would I be? I snorted and half turned towards him, trying in vain to see his face. And what has the cat-eared one told you? She has, a, she has a name. I felt a strong attachment to Yulia, so I didn't hesitate to stand up for her. Good man! Finally, being a man. A name, and what is it? An almighty observer, the double-faced Janice? Yulia. I said a bit uncertainly. Yulia? He started laughing like a horse on, a horse on meth. What kind of laugh is that? And who gave it to her? You, probably. Fine, tell me what you want and get lost. Okay, okay, your majesty, don't be angry. He bowed awkwardly. The sight was so grotesque that I even shuddered. And what has the so-called Yulia told you? I decided there was no point in hiding the information I had found out recently. She told me that there are many other camps, that, there are th th that you are the same as me. And then after seven days, we leave and never come back. It was disgusting for me to be in the same boat as him, but a fact was still a fact. Yeah, that's about right. And what did she tell you about, your, about herself? Do you think that it's any of your business? Besides, surely you know everything about me. Yeah, I know something. I've dealt with her before. His tone was so disgusting that I didn't even want to continue this conversation. Well, if you have nothing more to... Nope, wait a minute. I haven't finished yet. Now what? You want me to tell you what she's hiding from you? Go on. I was sure that Yulia had no secrets from me, but in my situation, any information could be useful. Never come back. No, they do come back. And you come back. At least you did before. I don't understand. I did tell you that you had already been here. Uh, so after seven days, it doesn't ma it doesn't matter whether you leave on a bus or fall asleep in the forest. You will find yourself sitting in the 410 again. But how? She told you that she w that we just disappear, right? I didn't answer. Well, I can't be well. I can't be sure that she's lying. Maybe she just doesn't know everything. But what I said is true. You and I were here many times. Of course, I've been here many more times. But that doesn't matter. Okay, then why don't I remember anything? You will remember you you will remember them all sometime later. That's what's happening to me. And you're telling me that there is no escape from here? Yes, I am. I remember you told me that that what happened today has never happened before, right? True, this is the first time. And how could you explain that? I won't. You're hoping that something will change? No, no, no way it will. We'll see about that. I decisively turned and walked away. To my surprise, the pioneer didn't even try to stop me. Well, I mean, he's like a ghost, right? Ah, my love! I returned to the cabin and found Yulia carefully combing her tail. You were talking to him again. How do you know? For a moment, I had doubts. Just disgust. He is, uh, just guessed. He's supposed to appear when you're when you're alone. Yeah. And? He told me that no one disappears, that we come back. Yulia didn't answer anything. Is that so? To tell you the truth, I don't know. I sat on the bed beside her and began to think. I don't know how long we were sitting there, but soon I started to fall asleep. Let's go watch the stars. Let's go. I wanted to sleep badly, but at the same time, I felt a sense of incompleteness and was hoping fresh air would clear my thoughts. A few minutes later, we were at the square. Hey, that's adorable. Uh, I sat on the bench and Yulia put her head in my lap and stared at the sky. Isn't it beautiful? It is. We sat in silence for quite a long time. So what will happen tomorrow? What do you mean? Well, tomorrow is the seventh day, so it's time to leave. Do you want to leave? Suddenly I was struck by a realization that I, I have heard this question many times before. According to you and him, even if I don't want to, I must. So let's leave. She smiled. Will you come with me? Of course I will. After, after all this, you must definitely marry me. Ha <laughs> ha, I love her already. She's just, all right, well, you know, like, you know, we got it on, so clearly we have to get married now. You're like, I like you. I don't know of a single administration that would register marriages with cat girls, but you, we will find one. So we'll look for one. Okay, seriously though, what'll happen tomorrow? In the evening, the bus will come. You sure about that? Absolutely sure. It always comes. And? And we'll take it. And then? Why are you asking me all these stupid questions? Yulia protested. How should I know? Well, make a guess. And we'll go back to your world. That would that would be... I stopped. We'll see. I sighed. And what about you and your many selves? I only look after this here, right? 
Over there, I will be just a regular one. Sure, with cat ears and a tail. Yulia hit me painfully in the ribs. Hey, I'm just joking. Maybe without a tail, she said sadly. No, no, I like it. Don't think anything like that. She said nothing, just closed her eyes. And what's it like over there? It's different. That's the best way I can put it. Some things are better, some are worse. We've got internet. I chuckled. And what would I do there? Well, I don't know. Let's solve the problems as they come. All right. I like this ending. We sat there for a lo so far. I like. I sat there for a long time talking about all sorts of foolish things. Finally, Yulia said, "Let's go sleep." Yeah, good timing. I felt a wave of a terrible fatigue. Tomorrow is the time to pack our things. But I, ha I have nothing to pack. How about that? He has nothing to pack. But you know what? I have. For example, I giggled good-naturedly. I just can't imagine what she has. She was planning to take. What? What about my supplies for the winter? Apples, nuts, mushrooms. Do you really think you'll need all that? Of course. Of course. She jumped up and looked at me sternly. I'm going to sleep and you can do whatever you want. With those words, Yulia marched briskly toward the camp leader's cabin. Hey, I didn't. I rushed after her. I was about to say, don't leave. Don't let her leave. After entering the cabin, Yulia immediately undressed, stuck into the bed, and pulled the blanket over her head. I didn't mean anything like that. If you want to take your stores, let, let's take them. In the end, they would be useful for us, especially in my situation where anything could happen. I was just joking. She peeked out from under the blanket and stuck out her tongue. And now, sleep commanded Yulia. I didn't mind it, so I undressed, laid down beside her, and we fell asleep holding each other. Ah, that's so adorable. So wholesome. So adorable. Freaking finally. Finally. Like, at least she could, she could heal my broken heart. I had a strange dream. No, of course, being here in this camp was extremely strange by itself, incom incomparable with any normal nighttime dreams. However, in this dream, everything seemed so real that... But when I woke up, I couldn't remember a thing. There was only vague Im uh, images of a long driveway, an old rusted bus, rickety gates of the camp, collapsed statues of pioneers, and an abandoned square. I ran through the camp back and forth, trying as, tr as if trying to find someone, but exactly who remained a mystery to me. When I woke up, the sun was already setting. A bright sunbeam was uh, lighting up the dust, uh, uh, drifting in the silence of the room and painting it with all the colors of the rainbow. Reflections of the of the glass took on different outlines. Uh, one from one angle, and it's just a spot of sunlight. Look from another, and it's a pirate waving his cutlass. I stretched lazily and yawned. Ah, yes, my love. Turning to the side, I saw Yulia sleeping peacefully next to me. Good morning, said Yulia without without opening her eyes. It's daytime already. Morning starts when you wake up. I agree. That's why my mornings are like 11. Uh, you're talking just the same way I did before. So now you've changed your mind? Well, I don't know. During the last week, I got used to getting up in the morning. That was not entirely true, because I didn't always wake up with the sunrise and regularly miss the lineup. You want to say that you've changed? She giggled. I think any man in my position would change, at least a little. It seems quite natural to me. Yeah, perhaps. I won't argue. A long silence followed. The kind of silence where you were not only tortured by the need to say something just to break the oppressive awkwardness. This, this silence could say more than any word. Than any words. Well, we're leaving today? I asked finally. I think so. You think? You may not. Uh, you mean you are not. You are not even sure? Not completely. This is happening for the first time. You mean the disappearances of the pioneers? Not just that. She got out of bed and started to dress. I looked at her mesmerized, unable to look away. What are you looking at? Get up! It's time to pack. You mean your berries and mushrooms? Of course. Yulia stood arms akimbo and looked at me resentfully. Do you want my supplies to be gone? Of course I don't. To tell the truth, I didn't really give a damn about them. To be precise, I just don't see the point in stocking food for a one-way journey. At least without a return ticket, for sure. I would say I, I want it because she wants it, and that's enough for me. A few minutes later, we were standing in the same forest glade where the day before, Yulia had been sprinkling a mushroom with sugar. She went behind a tree, threw aside the leaves, and pulled out a heavy sack. All this. This isn't all. This is just what's necessary. I couldn't p uh, put what I planned in a way... To say it in a nice way, so I decided to say nothing. That is the real, that's the that's the way to do it. If you have nothing nice to say, then shut up. The sack was filled with mushrooms, berries, apples, and nuts all mixed up. I immediately had serious doubts about the fitness for human consumption of this assorted lot. Take it, said Yulia, pointing to a sack with an easy smile. Well, I hope you understand that I won't be able to. No, no, you're strong. Look how massive you are. She used her hands to indicate the difference in our heights. I tried to lift the sack. It weighed at least 30 kilos. Look, let's only take some of it. We won't be able to eat it all this anyway. I was trying to, I was trying to cheat. Why not? Winters are long in these lands. How would you know that? I guessed. I tried to make the most painful grimace I could. I can manage it to the square at most. Have mercy on me. Yo-yo you, thought a little. Okay, then throw out the berries. What a great solution. Get rid of the lightest stuff. However, I didn't object, so I put my hand into the sack. I can't say it got any lighter. I said when I finished with the berries. I don't want to. I don't want to hear it. I sighed and sank uh, helplessly to the ground next to the sack. Then let's carry it in turns. But it's heavy. 
exclaimed Yulia. That's what I'm telling you. I mean, it's heavy for me. As if it's light for me. I muttered under my breath, trying to make Yulia not hear it. It, uh, it is light for you. It seemed I should not underestimate her cat ears. Okay, let's come back here later. For now, it would be nice to have something to eat. Well, maybe. She smiled and held out her hand to me. The canteen was filled with the smell of fried potatoes. Yulia flittered around me, watching me cook. To tell the truth, I never found any special pleasure in doing this. I always wanted to start eating immediately, without waiting for all the ingredients to be prepared, the water to boil, the dumplings to float up. That's why I'm usually fine with eating sandwiches or fast food. You're doing so well. I told you there's nothing special to it. But, but, she tried to find words. But, you're doing well anyway. I'm glad you like it. Of course I like it. She's so wholesome, dude. Judged by the way Yulia was demolishing the potatoes, she actually enjoyed my simple culinary creation. Are you worried? Chew first, then speak. What a lout. You must behave in polite society. And what kind of society are we in here? Yulia spread her hands to the sides and laughed. That was true. The canteen was empty. Just like the whole camp. What do you think? Where are they, where are they all gone? How should I know? She picked up the last, pla last piece with her fork and deftly popped it into her mouth. You miss them? Sort of. What about me? I, I am better than, a, than any stray dog. Another quote. I didn't pay any attention to it this time. Uh, given that you're some kind of cat, you've definitely got, got your quotes right. Are you are you feel, feeling lonely? Well, I'm not I'm not alone here, just the two of us. But what if it's something? What what if what? But what? Hap? Uh, my brain is breaking. What is happening? But if what? There we go. God damn. Had happened, didn't happen. We may be like my dyslexia is actually disgusting. It's so irritating. Oh my god. But or uh, oh, see there there it goes again i stopped for a moment with a stutter and dyslexia and my other issues like it's a miracle i'm not just like bedridden so in other realities you and me weren't so close yoya finished for me yeah no no it's strange why well because there are a lot of camps as you say and according to the theory of probability which means that anything can happen within the last two days is really something exceptional you say that as if it's bad of course not i felt the blood rush to my head just strange. There are lots of strange things here. That's why I use that word so often. Anyway, anyway, you're just nitpicking. Who? Me? Never. She laughed. No, you are seriously nitpicking, every, especially when it comes to words. Why would I do that? I can't even imagine. You'd know, but you'd know better. Seems like any of my arguments, she'd already had an answer prepared as if she knew in advance what I would say. Forget it. Let's go. Where? I realized that saying this was a big mistake. Now she'll definitely drag me back to that sack. Well, there's enough time till the bus arrives, so we could... Oh, right, the supplies! I just scratched my chin and followed her. Epic fail. How about you suck it up and be a man? Carrying nearly 25 kilos isn't easy. Even for a short distance. What a baby. I st Actually, you know what? Really quick. He keeps saying, saying in kilos. What is that? Uh, 25 kilos to pounds. Well, how much pounds? 55 pounds? What a baby! <laughs> what a baby, man! I've had so many jobs, like... The, like I've had I for one for instance once I worked at a warehouse and it was a food warehouse So you were always moving like uh, canned goods and things like that one of my jobs Well, one of the things we had to do was move uh, pallets full of 60 pound bags of uh, I think it was rice or something and so and there were there was lots of them like 50 50 pound bags or 60 pound bags were very common so I had to move like 200 in one pallet like you know what I mean? So it's like that like so moving it once is like what a baby I'd have to throw like two of those things on my shoulders just to move them across to another pallet that oh man I have even less respect for him than I did before Anyway, Yulia hurried and encouraged me, but it was just making things worse I don't know if I deserved to meddle in some strange sack of cat girl supplies short distance carrying event Wow, what a mouthful, but about an hour later the sack was transported to the bus stop an hour later How delicate I collapsed beside it exhausted That's it you're such a hero. See, nothing to be afraid of. My whole body ached, my muscles burned, and rivers of sweat flowed from my forehead, stinging my eyes. I don't know what I what I was owed for this, but this competition was more like the Olympics for mentally challenged people. Though I won, I'm still a retard. <laughs> for once, he's not wrong. Look, the bus is coming. What? I jumped up. My fatigue vanished in an instant. Something could indeed be seen in the distance. I narrowed my eyes and saw the Icarus. But why? Yulia told me it would arrive closer to the night. Moreover, I'd expected the Lyas bus. So apparently the bus that leaves and the bus that arrives is different, I guess. Soon the bus stopped in front of us and the door opened, inviting us in. The driver's seat was empty, but I was not really surprised. Much stranger things that happen were happening here. Coming? Yulia easily jumped onto the first step and gestured for me to follow her. Don't you think it's weird that the buses go by themselves? Well, she thought about that. 
Of course it's strange, but you said yourself there are plenty of strange things here. She, yeah, she was right on that one. Anyway, I had no choice. In either case, whether I stay or whether I go on the bus, I'm not sure about what will happen next. But in the case of the second choice, I had at least an illusionary hope of escaping from the camp. I sighed, and with one last effort, I lifted the sack and got onto the bus. We drove for about an hour. Yulia was constantly chattering about something, but I wasn't listening. No surprise there. I carefully studied the passing landscape through the window. Forests, fields, rivers, forests, fields, absolutely nothing suspicious. On the one hand, that gave me hope, but on the other, it was a sign that in the end, nothing will change, because in this world, it seems everything is slow and measured, following its well-established rules. That's how it was a few days ago. Although, maybe I shouldn't be drawing conclusions after having been here only a week. Well, now I'm sure that everything will be fine. I looked at her carefully. Cat ears, a long tail that moved rhythmically back and forth, si slightly enlarged fangs. Yulia seemed like a character from a fairy tale. F like a dream fairy tale. We can decide what to do with her in the real world later. I was turning into one big throbbing vein, ready to burst any moment. I was waiting. Waiting for how to see how, far, how this would end. The result could be anything. For me, it was important not to go crazy ahead of time. My nerves were stretched to the limit. I tried not to think about anything. But it was impossible to distract myself. Hey, are you, are you even listening? Of course he's not listening. The dude never listened to anybody. What is that? From Snapchat? I don't care about Snapchat. Anyway, sorry. Uh, no, sorry. I was deep in thought. Well, as always, she pouted. Now, in such a big moment, you know, we can get out. Get out of the camp. It's a very important moment for me. Well, it's important for me, too, but I'm not worried. You simply can't see this in context. What do you mean? Well, before, I lived in a different world. The real one, the real one, as it seems, so I have nothing to compare this camp to. And you, uh, uh, you, we can say, were born here. No, I wasn't. How do you know? I just know. I know that. So it's like, okay. Like, this whole thing is very confusing. The bus peacefully bumped, uh, bounced over the bump, shaking me more and more. The steering wheel was turning on its own, and I soon stopped noticing the absence of a driver. My eyes began to close, and I dozed off. I was about to say, you have to fall asleep on the bus, otherwise it doesn't work. Some girl bent over me. She was gently whispering with something in my ear. So tenderly that... Whoa, he woke up in the bus again. That's weird. I felt a strong blow on my head. Hey, don't sleep. Am I disturbing you? I asked in annoyance, rubbing the bruised place. You're not listening to me. As if escaping from here, we have lots of time for conversation. If, if, and if we don't escape... Then we'll have some even more time. I tried to smile, but just thinking that we would never leave this camp frightened me a lot. So I just gave a stupid grin. It's better if we don't escape, because in your world, I don't know what to expect there. But you won't pay any attention to me at all. I will, I promise. She, I hugged her sincerely. Really, truly, really, truly. Yulia leaned against me. And you'll listen to me? Of course. And you'll always agree with me? Sure. She pulled away and looked into my eyes. Well, then I forgive you. A loud laugh filled the bus cabin. But be careful, don't forget Don't forget about that or try to deceive me. You want to sign a contract? A marriage contract? I don't have the property for that anyway, but I do. Yulia pointed at the bag lying at the aisle. Well then, well then, I tried to uh, remember what I'd, brought with, what I'd bought with, with my money. Here, I took my mobile phone out of my pocket, but this time it was already out of a charge. I was about to say, what kind of phone does it like, you know, is still working after a week? What's that? Yulia asked curiously, taking the mobile. A very useful thing in my world. You can communicate with people at a distance. Wow, that's really cool. Excellent, that'll do. She put the mobile on the seat. Deal then? My supplies for the winter are for me, and from you is that thing. Okay, deal. All right, now we are husband and wife. She smiled slyly. Hey, wait. I suddenly remembered that all this conversation had started with a marriage contract. Anyway, without an official registration, when we get to your world, we will register, f we will register our marriage. A man without a wife is like a kitchen without a knife. I like that, it even rhymes. Uh, if we get there, of course. Yulia said nothing, but just stared straight without, with her eyes wide open. Good lord, what the hell. I followed her gaze and realized that the bus was full of people. All of them were wearing pioneer uniforms, and they all looked exactly like that pioneer. Nobody said a single word, they just looked silently in my direction. Okay, this is creepy. I couldn't see their faces. Clothes, statures, yes, but their faces were shrouded in shadows that seemed to appear from nowhere. It was as if, instead of the heads that normal people... Uh, have they had many black holes? I started to shiver and my back broke out in goosebumps. Yulia squeezed my hand. With an enormous effort, I forced myself to look at her. She was very scared too. If I was alone at the moment, I would have probably fainted because he's a sissy. But right now, I was responsible for more than my own life. Attaboy. Who are you? I gritted out with difficulty. The pioneers maintained their terrifying silence. It became hard to breathe. I was grasping for breath, but my brain refused to work on low oxygen and I lost consciousness for a moment. Like I said, sissy. Who are you? What do you want? I heard Yulia shout just as I regained my senses. A pioneer stood up from, my, from the first seat and walked towards us. It's Shadow Pioneer! Hi, Semyon. We decided to go back home, too. Two. A chorus of voices filled the bus. 
We'll keep you company. I didn't know what to say. This was the strangest situation I'd experienced on the camp. Uh, neither Yulia, nor the city, nor the disappearance of the pioneers, nor this strange person standing before me were comparable with this. I ask you a question. Seems like Yulia was still able to speak clearly. Not a surprise. In the end, she was still, you could say, an extraordinary being. All right, sorry, just trying to refresh the old throat. I repeat, we are just going home. His voice sounded frantic. Are we bothering you? Bothering. What do you want from us? Nothing at all. Nothing. I don't believe you. I know there's a reason for you to be doing all this. It's just your imagination, animal. Maybe I am an animal, but what are you, a ghost, a shadow? I told you he is a shadow. Maybe. Ghosts have their rights, too. You have the right to get the hell out of here. Yulia shouted so loud that my ears rang, but neither the pioneers nor his companions reacted. I guess we'll stay, he said maliciously. But how did you manage this and all the others? At last, I gathered the strength to speak. It's simple, my dear friend. Collective mind. Heard about it? And so? Every one of us wanted to wish you luck simultaneously, that's all. Luck. In person, in person, I would say. That's the reason we're here. But what'll, what'll happen next? Honestly, I have no idea. Get out, Yulia shouted again. Be cool, you. Settle down. You see, he addressed me again. I don't want to hide anything from you. You have a good chance to get out of here now. I don't know exactly why, but your actions broke the cycle. Cycles, to be precise, all our cycles. And this is the chance we won't have to leave the camp uh, every seven days and return back on the 8th, waking up in the bus. Then don't return, just die. It's not that simple, and why shouldn't we have a sense of self-preservation? We should, right? He asked the pioneers. Should. I heard their response. So we decided to keep you company. Now, either uh, either we all get out of here together, or we'll all vanish together forever and start another, or start another cycle. All three options are are, uh, are what? All three options suit us. And what if we die because of you? Well, you won't die alone. We'll die with honor. Honor. Or do you think that our lives? He laughed. Well, what we call lives, lives. Are they not as important as yours? Yulia you didn't know how to answer. And don't think that all of us are here. In fact, many more of us didn't fit in. But this was this were enough to but. There were enough tickets for everyone. You, Yulia hissed. It's too late. It's too late. I suggest you calm down and enjoy the flight. Stewardess will offer you food and drinks in a couple of minutes. He grinned and went back to his. He grinned and went back to his place. Yulia jumped up, but I stopped her. Let me go. I'll take him down. No need. What can you do to him? What good will it do? She looked at me in surprise, but sat down. So what? Are you suggesting we don't do anything and just wait? What can What can we do? I don't know, but we shouldn't just be sitting. I have learned one thing for sure in this camp. Very little is up to me. Actually, nothing at all, especially now, especially here. I have not the slightest idea of what to do to drive them out of here. And even if I know, and even if I knew, I'm not sure that nothing would change. Nothing would affect the final outcome. You may be right, Yulia, Yulia said in a sad voice. We can only wait. We can only wait then. It won't take long. She put her head on my shoulder. We have been going for such a long time, it seemed like an eternity. The sun had set and the night fell. Seconds lasted for hours, minutes, for years. The pioneers remained dead silent, and even that one, the arrogant one, didn't try to start a conversation. The silence was louder than any shout. A quiet clap would be enough to make my eardrums explode. Me and Yulia stayed silent, too. Everything had been said today. There were no words left. I felt totally empty. My head was as empty as... Yep, here's the... Uh, there is a, another analogy. And are they really my colleagues in misfortune? Did they really come to this camp, too? Spend a week here and leave? And then do it all over again? Maybe it would be it would be the same for me as that pioneer said. Anything is possible. Anything is possible now. Fall asleep, dude. You're never gonna get out of here if you don't. I heard a quiet snoring from Yulia. She'd fallen asleep. There we go. She's there. Now you now you need to fall asleep. All that stress must have been too much for her. Or maybe she used up all her energy shouting. In any case, it's better to face the end while sleeping. Atta boy. Now I was certain that this was the end. It's stupid to cling to hope while standing on the edge of a cliff surrounded by countless enemies. And even if there was the smallest chance of rescue, you wouldn't really think about it. Maybe if we shouldn't be this way and someone else would have more optimism in my place, I just had to take the last step. Why though? These are not stairs, not an escalator. It'll get me to the finish in any case. Fall asleep. Go to sleep. I closed my eyes and my consciousness left me at once. Finally, I fell asleep. I don't know whether it would last for an hour or for an eternity. And for the love of God, don't you wake up in that bus. You give me closure. Wake up at your put with your at your place with your girl, ideally. And if you can't, then at least find your girl later. Emptiness is not the best place for thoughts. Where there is nothing, the essence of the soul. Oh God, I feel like we're we're about to start a long monologue of something inconsequential. The essence of the normal world disappears. In the end, thoughts are the part of it too, just an immaterial one. It is difficult to imagine where existence ends. A person is not supposed to figure it out. Oh, for a second, I'm like, whoa! But 
I think, but I don't think you can see anything. I don't think. And plus, I think I think that's a dude. I think that might be Semyon. Anyway, emptiness is not the best place for thoughts where there is nothing. Oh, we already read that. It's difficult to imagine where existence ends. A person is not supposed to figure it out. I regain consciousness in complete darkness. To be precise, I regain the ability to perceive myself as a person. There was nothing else, neither around nor inside me. It was like I ceased to exist, was erased from the universe, but I wasn't dead, no. I was totally different, as if I had moved from three-dimensional space to one-dimensional. The whole world compressed to the size of one dot. The dot was me, was everything. I was everything and at the same time was nothing. Oh my god. The philosophy is killing me. However, my consciousness, my memories, my soul went into that tiny patch too. I wasn't afraid because there was no need or maybe because I still couldn't understand what was happening. All sense of time was lost here. There was simply no such term here. That's why it was impossible to tell how long I had been that emptiness. Finally, after an hour or a year, I started to hear a quiet voice. I couldn't make out the words, but I was sure... Uh, um, but I was the one it spoke to. Actually, there was no one else. Semyon. Semyon. Yeah? I replied as if answering a phone. Nice to meet you. The voice sounded very close. We've known each other for a long time, though. Who are you? I am you. Did I die? No, nothing like that. The voice sounded calm as if speaking to an old friend. What's happening to me? You've reached the end of your path. What path? You have managed to leave the camp. Camp? Yeah, I remember. The Pioneer Camp. Suddenly I remembered the last seven days, and I remembered how I was leaving together, together with Yulia. Where is... Yulia? Yeah? She's right here. I looked around, but there was only emptiness around. I don't see her. You shouldn't see her. You should feel. I wasn't tense at all, as if I, I was recovering from... something. Uh, I don't feel. I don't feel anything. You just have to remember. After those words, a thousands of pictures, images, uh, smells, thoughts reappeared in my mind. The camp. I was there. I, uh, I was there for real with with Slavia, Lena, Alyssa, uh, Olyana, with Masha, and then, whoa! He remembered Masha's name. So apparently, this also takes place after the whole Masha thing too. Trippy. Uh, I clearly remember that I left it, and then I came back to the real world, and then I met Slavia at the bus stop. No, I met I met Olyana at the university. No, I met Alyssa at the concert. Oh my god! He's remembering everybody's endings! What is happening? This is so cool! I met Alyssa at the concert, but I had lived with Lena for so many years. No, I had a completely different life with Masha. How is all that even possible? I remember events of almost five lifespans in the smallest of details, but everything remained simultaneously, and I'm sure that it was all real. How? Yes, all of it really happened to you. How? You left the camp, but not just once that you lived your life. You lived your normal life, then you came back and left again. So, was it like I died and was revived? No. You could think of it that it all happened simultaneously. I don't understand. You don't need to. And who are those other pioneers? They are you too. The other, other sides of you. I don't understand. Every person is an endless universe. His own actions determine how his life will proceed. You remember those five times because they were times you took, you took choices that will lead you out of the camp. Your other replicas acted differently somewhere. That's it. It's all that simple. For me, it wasn't that simple. And what, what is the camp? You could consider it a testing ground. And who were who are you? I am you. But after a long time after. But from a long time after. Not from as you see it. Not from as you see it. I am beyond and above all of you. You could consider me the prime Semyon. So, you are the reason for all this? That's not exactly true. Everything did happen according to my will, but I, but I can control these events. Uh, everything did not happen according to my will, but I can control these events. But why? Are you against it? I lost myself in thought, as le at least as lost as I, I was, was possible, in such an obscure state of mind. I don't know. I don't know. If you were given an option now, when you know and remember, remember everything, would you really decide to take it back to the start and just forget everything? I don't know. I wasn't ready to answer such a difficult question, because avoiding things that are difficult is how I live my life. Anyway, where is Yulia? She's right here. Where? Inside, inside of you. How is that? Yulia is your inner world, your consciousness which had gained uh, which had gained a form. I couldn't comprehend his words. You don't need to try to understand, I already said. But I felt that I missed her. Don't be afraid, she'll always be with you. I don't think I wanted this exact union just uh, just yesterday. The hardest thing is to make inner is to make inner peace. Not peace with an enemy, but you have done it. If you want to love her, you have to learn how to love yourself. Well, if that's enough for you, it's time for me to leave. Wait, what what'll happen to me? You'll go back. I already didn't understand what was real and what was not. How many realities there are? Where to? It depends only on you. I don't understand. You have to remember. You have remembered all possible variations of events now. He paused for a long time, and I didn't and didn't and I didn't care to say anything, so I just wouldn't accidentally interrupt him. So you have at least five options. While I remember all of this, that's up to you to decide. A trace of emotion appeared in his voice for a moment. Maybe joy or maybe dissatisfaction. Farewell. But. I could feel that the voice will never speak to me again. Whoa. 
This is blowing my mind right now. I'm, I'm actually invested. This is cool. It's because he's because all all of our It's all connected and that that's awesome all of our variations every ending we've gotten He remembered all all of them and that is so stinking cool. He remembered all of the girls He remembered everyone's lives that he's had that's so amazing. Anyway, that's so cool time passed I tried to decide what to do next if everything is as he said then I just have to wish by that time, I'd completely calmed down and you could say even cheered up a bit. I was totally sure that I'd go I had gotten out of that enchanted camp. Moreover, a bright future awaited me. I didn't know it, I remembered it. But what should I choose? I closed my eyes and clearly imagined Slavia smiling at me. She was always willing to help me and never scolded me for anything. It is always calm and safe being with her. And that moment at the, the meeting at the bus stop, I guess I never thought about being with her in real life, but that would be amazing, I'm sure. Uh, throughout so many years, Lena had truly grown precious to me. I actually remember all of that time spent with her. I remember our kids. I remember times of joy and sorrow. Remember everything. It's hard to reject all that. Or Alyssa, dearly hugging her guitar. It's ne it's never boring with her. Maybe that's the life I always dreamed of. Simply laid back and fun. Maybe that's the girl I'd, I, uh, I always wished for. A, a loyal tomboy. Alyssa's image in my thoughts remained slightly. The grown, the grown up Ulyana seemed like a good option too. Of course, back in the camp, I didn't treat her as a woman, but now, obviously, she's she's got her she's got her cons. But at the same time, there are a sense of magic in her, something something attractive. And of course, Miku, Masha from that other life, she was truly precious to me. Back there, uh, maybe back there at the camp, it's just a small episode, and I might be a completely different person from myself and all the other paths. But that's for the best. New opportunities, possibilities, and that person I love, a person who I seemingly knew my entire life. But it is still sad that I'll never see Yulia again. You certainly will. Her voice sounded in my head. What? What are you? Where are you? I'm right here, like you said. Who knew? Uh, you knew? No. I understood only when we came here. Are you okay with it? Won't you miss me? Of course not. I'm a I will always be with you. Do you, re do you remember your promise? What promise? That you'll always be with me. Yes. Don't you, don't you ever break it. I'll be watching you. I don't know if I'll ever speak to her like that again. Maybe one could simply go nuts from that. But right now, I was happy. All right, I won't forget. Then you'll just have to make a choice. I felt Yulia disappear, vanishing in the labyrinth of my mind. Well, it's time. I closed my eyes tight and... And died. No. <laughs> no. Something's gonna happen. Whoa. My eyes were struck by a bright sunlight. No kidding. Uh, something surprising about that. It is summer after all. Or nothing surprising about that. It's just, it's that strange dream again. Why did I start seeing it so often recently? Maybe there is a reason. Still, why? A pioneer camp, some girls, the camp leader. I had never been to the, never been to the camp. Maybe you just don't remember? Very funny. But what if? Trust me, I clearly remember everything that's happened to me since I was three years old. And before that, I was probably at, at an unconscious age. Even if that is true, all of this is not accidental. Why is it that I, why is it I why is it not accidental? There are people who see a black cat in their dreams every night and nothing happens. Uh, did you just made that make that up? I haven't made up anything. I read about it recently. A black cat is one thing. Such a detailed dream is something else. I don't see much difference. Okay, then what would you say about that voice? What voice? Don't don't play the fool. Wasn't planning to. Which uh, which told you to make a choice? Well, a voice. So what? There was a reason. There was a reason. But I don't remember anything else. The dream ends there. Maybe you forget. Maybe maybe you forget when you wake up. Maybe, but. But what? That means you uh, that you actually made a choice. I don't even re remember the options. Were there any? Uh, there should have been. You don't even try to be serious about the important things as always. Oh my god, it's so important. There's no point in talking to you. Is he having an argument with himself? Recently I started to notice that I have something like a split personality. I've noticed that too. An inner monologue is currently a normal phenomenon for is certainly a normal phenomenon for any person, but when it turns into a dialogue, well, it is still a long way from being a clinical case. Sorry, there's another flash. What? Oh, nothing crazy. Uh, because I talk to myself and not another uh, personally personality inside my mind. Oh, by the way, happy Valentine's Day. I, j I just realized today's Valentine's Day. Or happy Singles Awareness Day, as it is usually known for me and everyone I know. Maybe with my own subconscious. However, that is not important. So, split personality, yelling him. What the freak? Oh my gosh, it's telling us to choose. Pause. We're just gonna save this over this side now. Okay, uh, let, let, let's pick our favorites. So I, I liked Masha. I think hers was good. Olyana, Lena, Alyssa, I think Slavia. All right, Yolia, probably my favorite so far. And again, we saved it, so it'll be okay. Oh, it's, it's actually her! 
I turned over to the other side. The bright sun still shined into my eyes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, I replied. Choice. Did I even have a choice? It's the love of my life. It's, it's Yulia. Every story has a beginning and its end. Every story, there's no book, but every book has the last page. Turning over just to open a new one tomorrow. Hey. All right. Okay. Okay. Very cool. A cat is fine too. Achievement unlocked. Hey, there's just question mark end. So that is uh that is the Yulia ending. Very cool. That was awesome. That is my favorite one yet. Um, it just it combined everything. So, yeah. So it just it, it combined everything. It just that that was that was so cool. So yeah, it was like basically that they were all connected. That he was like it was so you know back in the Semyon good ending when the shadow pioneer guy was talking about how you'll repeat it and then eventually you will remember. I kind of think that's what basically happened is that he lived it so many times that he did remember. Um, and so he remembered and so he, he realized that it's all, that it's all, you know, that he, it's, it's all connected. And, and that's what he realized is that it was all connected. Very cool. Okay. Back up. All right, let's try Slavia next. Because again, it's only like one one quick little thing. So, ah, uh, Slavia, the other the other waifu. I turned over to the other side. The bright sun still shined. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I replied, "Choice that I even have a choice." Every story is a beginning and its end. Every story has its canvas, synopsis, contents, key moments, prologue, and epilogue. And there is no book that rereading it would not reveal new details. Every book has a last page, and after turning it over, we we put the book on the shelf just to open a new one tomorrow. I, I, I blew through it thinking it was the same old one, and that actually wasn't. Okay. There's that one. So basically, nothing's different. It's just It just shows them. So I, if we're just going to show them, we might as well just go down the list then. Let's just go down the list and and look look at them all. Might as well. Hey, there's Alyssa. I like how she's suddenly blonde. Like, her hair color changes every time. And good morning. Lots of good mornings. Nothing, nothing is different. Otherwise, I just want to see them. All right. Next one is uh, Lena... She's she's blonde too. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, all right. Look, she's she's not blonde. I was just I was just curious. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Next one. All right, uh, Oyana. Hey, there she is. She has she has a lot of hair as an adult. Okay, next one. Uh, Masha. Last but not least, or Miku, depending on who you ask. There she is, man. She has she has way more hair. I mean, which makes sense. I mean, have you seen her ponytails? Or I guess they're pigtails. I guess. Anyway, all right, Yulia. There we go. Okay, now now the Yulia one can go. So basically, there you go, everybody. So now there is but one ending left. Uh, it's freaking hype, is what it is. There is one ending left. In the very last ending, oh cool, there is nothing to edit. He's like he's like like a Ken doll. There, well, that, I guess that works out for me. Less editing for me. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so that's it kids that that's all that is the ending uh, of uh, for for Yulia uh, it was awesome and uh, Yeah, that that was that was great. I liked that a lot. I loved I love how it connected everybody I also love how it's showing them anyway, but that's okay. I, I actually I liked I really like the time-lapse there that that's really cool anyway I also miss as in the real world. She doesn't have cat ears. Obviously. It's it is a shame. It is a shame but anyway, uh, it was good. I love how it connected everything. You know, that was cool. Uh, you know, I, I talk a lot of trash about the game, but honestly, here's my thoughts. We're not we're, we're not done yet. There is one ending left, but I just want to get this out before we go any farther. Um, the game is, is really cool, especially with this one. This one, uh, how it combined them all, so it really felt like there was a bigger over like a bigger a bigger more important point in getting all of the good endings it makes it a little more worth it to feel like that there was an overall purpose um now of course there is one ending left to go but i do enjoy the game i think there i think that semyon i semyon is annoying i think as a i think as a guy he's kind of a dickhead he's really mean to the really mean to people and i don't like him as a person so that's rough but i really like the girls i i really like them and i i like how you're trying to find the good ending for all of them 
Um, I think that there are too many like like analogies. I think he spends too long philo like you know going into going into philosophy, and I find that very annoying. And I wish he would knock it off. Uh, because I wish if it was a little more business, I think that it would be more fun. Because I feel like I have to sift through. That's the reason that this is another two and a half hour episode. It's because I have to sift through his constant, like, philosophy, you know, philosophy to get to good stuff. And so that makes it annoying. Ultimately, it's a good game. Ultimately, it's worth it, especially how it combines it. Now, there is one ending to go. Obviously, today's was a cat is fine too. And, but there is one ending. So you can guess all the question marks are all the bad endings that I'm not getting. Uh, but there is one ending to go. The last ending we're getting is Hera Master 80. It says 80 level. I will probably type it Hera Master level 80 because that just makes more sense. It's probably what I will do. Uh, but this is the third special route. This is like the happily ever after. This is the, you know, everybody, you know, this is the happily ever after ending. With the, it's, it's the harem ending, so that's the one we'll be going for, but very exciting. So, I, I, I am torn. Uh, technically, what I want to do is rec I, I am tempted to record the harem ending today, get a double episode, and knock this out. Because, especially because we're only one, we're one away. And then part of me is like, nah, just stick to the regular plan. You know, just record it tomorrow is also what I'm thinking. Well, well let's just stick to normal. We'll, we'll finish it tomorrow. It's fine. It is tempting, but I will decide to be patient. So, that is it for this one. So, I will be recording Saints Row right after this. So, if you are interested in that, you're more than welcome to stay tuned. Happy Valentine's Day or Singles Awareness Day, as it is known. How appropriate that we actually got a good love ending on the one where on the Valentine's Day. How appropriate. And, uh, anyway. So, very, very cool. And, uh, yeah. I think the up So, of course, Saints Row right, right after this. Tomorrow, once again, is going to be the finale of this game. We're going to get the harem ending tomorrow. And then there'll also be a positive anime review coming out tomorrow. Uh, despite the fact that it's Saturday. And then Monday, we can hop into it with a brand new side game. And Saints Row, once again, can take the primary alpha game spotlight. Which will be very good. Anyway, that is going to call for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the content today. And we will talk to you guys later. Uh, hi. So, uh, this would norm normally be the part of this where my outro would be hitting right about now. And it would be over. Welcome back. So, okay. So, it occurs to me a couple things. Okay, so I was glancing at... Yeah, okay. So, I, I was I was glancing at, uh... Okay, I'm sorry. Like, my, my, my brain shut off. Okay, so obviously we, we just did the Yulia ending happily ever after. I'm like, okay, you know, tomorrow we'll just, we'll just play through. I don't know why it's, I don't know why he sounds like Brian Regan, but whatever. So the plan was, I was like, okay, Saturday I'll play through the ending. It'll be great. Okay, so something just per pretty funny happened. Didn't realize. It turns out this harem ending, it's not a whole different thing. You know, the, the, the choice over here, uh, this one, this one. Okay, right here. So here, here is your options. This is the harem ending. You hit keep going or go back. That's literally it. So, yeah. I, it's not a whole other playthrough. It's just, it, it, it's a fork, basically, in the road. The left one, as an example. The left one goes with Yulia, you go back, and we, we obviously just saw that. And then the right one, you go forward into the, into the city. Uh, you keep going. So... Yeah, okay, so, and here's the other interesting thing. So I haven't seen all of it, but I was like, I was like, oh crap, I forgot to record that, that other that other ending. I'm like, I, I'm like, oh, that's okay, you know? I'm like, let I'll just take a glance at it real quick. Let's just see what it's about. So I clicked on it, and I, I just, I didn't even read his all his crap. I just fast-forwarded through it. I was just spam-clicking because I just wanted to see what, what would happen. And and then some cutscenes started, like, not like cutscenes, but, you know, like, images started appearing. And I'm like, wait a minute, I've seen this image before. And then I, I opened my little guide, and I looked at it, and I was like, this is the image from the harem ending. I'm like, oh, crap. So now I realize, because, so because it's not a whole other playthrough, it seems really stupid to wait and, like, to do a whole other episode. Like, if I go, whatever, 15, 10 minutes, I don't know, we could get the other ending, and then today, this could be the finale. Didn't realize that. So let's uh so I was like um so I was like well crap I gotta record this like if I waiting is stupid so I decided to not wait obviously and uh, here we are so let's press on uh, and then today can be the finale which will be pr which will be pretty hype so let's hop into it uh, yeah so uh, didn't expect that uh, damn that camp there is no camp no pioneers and it really doesn't matter why I arrived here my priority is to get out quickly 
I'll go forward. I shrugged up my shoulders, trying to express a minimum of interest. Yulia stared hard at me for some time, then took a couple of steps forward as if inviting me to follow her. Well, are you going? It seemed like the first time today we got a bit closer to the city, like 100 meters or so. I was almost sure that I would reach it, then I heard the sounds of a car horn from behind. A bus, an Icarus, approached us fast, cutting through the night darkness with its lights. I stopped, stepped to the roadside. That's... Yulia wasn't around. How did she manage to appear and disappear so unnoticeably? The bus slowly uh, stopped next to me, the door opened, and... Olga stepped out. Semyon, why didn't you come back? I asked you to. I could ask you the same thing. You said a disaster had happened, and now you... Okay. She suddenly softened. Get on the bus. What? what? What about the city? That's why we're going there, to see for ourselves. I hesitated. On one hand, it would be faster to go by bus. The road should lead to the city. On the other, the actions of the camp leader seem strange. We're going to the same direction, but uh, for the time being, anyway. Okay. I agreed and got onto the bus. And, obviously, the whole fam's here. The Icarus went in the direction of the mysterious city, bouncing over the, the bumps. It was too slow, in my opinion. I was so tired that my eyes started to close. And what about Yulia? Did I just leave her alone there? It looked like all the pioneers had been in the camp had got onto the bus. Maybe she wanted to say something to me. However, regardless of my struggle with Morpheus, my loud snoring sound from the a loud snoring or my loud snoring sound from the back seat uh, within a couple of minutes. Yeah. So uh, again, I was just clicking through this. So I have an idea about basically what happened. So. Based and again, I haven't seen the whole thing yet because again, I was I was clicking through this. I was ignoring this uh, I I think so. I think that that's the split is option a is you'll is the Yulia ending where everything is connected and then you uh, You and Yulia are together or is or any of them But I preferred Yulia so basically you and Yulia or you and one of the other girls are together IRL and you remembered everything that happened uh, Option B is this option where Yulia does not follow you so, but, 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 but that's the thing is technically I think Yulia and you in the other ending, but it could be anyone, but in this one, you, you don't get Yulia anyway, but you might get everybody. So I don't know. It's weird. Uh, so let's just press through it. This way we can see the other ending and you know, it, it is what it is. Everything is over now or not. I wanted to get out so badly and to not fall asleep. Is exhaustion the reason? Probably not. It was like I got, I got a dose of sedative. People can't lose conscious, consciousness just like that, and I never suffered from narcolepsy. My thoughts flowed calm and fast and calm like a wide river. Nothing interfered with their flight because I was sleeping. But at the same time, it felt like I was conscious. I'm about to open my eyes and... Apartment! An old chipped ceiling was looking down at me. A big crack divided it in two, lar in two parts lengthwise, as if threatening to drop the upper floors on me. That's sketchy. The computer fan sounded peaceful but strained. Thousands of specks of dust danced beautifully in the air. I wouldn't say beautifully, I'd say, I'd say grossly. The wind wailed outside the window, licking the frost-covered glass and then flying away, twirling the snowflakes in its wake. The bright, winter-cold moon looked down at my world, winking merrily. There was a ringing in my heavy head and I felt dizzy. A nasty aftertaste filled my mouth, as if I had eaten the contents of an ashtray and washed them down with a bottle of vodka. Oh, that's disgusting. The realization didn't come at once. I was intended to go somewhere yesterday and then... And then I had a strange dream about summer and a camp and pioneers and their leader and about a strange cat girl in a distant city. I always forget I, for, I always forget the end of my dreams. Did I get into did I get to the city or not? Wait a minute. Was that really a dream? I spent nearly a week in that camp. However, the clock didn't agree with me. According to it, only about 12 hours had passed. I sat on the bed and tried to remember. My feelings and emotions were really vivid, but the events of that dream were covered in fog. I remembered girls, their tears and smiles. I remembered joy and sadness that we experienced together, but their faces and figures were concealed by shadow. And there was there was a mine of sort, a bomb shelter, and then an island and, and, a, and a departure. And those damn grasshoppers which disturbed my, disturbed my sleep. And Slavia and Lena and Alyssa and Ilyana and Masha and Yulia. But there was something else, something beyond the dream, my life after, seemingly a new level of existence. Yeah, I had woken up many times. I met those girls while being awake in this world, and then everything started all over again. This huge load of information couldn't just handle it, uh, just couldn't handle in my head. My memory was overflowing. I was forgetting something very, se the, something every second, and I couldn't understand what was real and what was not. All the events of the camp blended into one fantastic picture. A collage made from hundreds of works by hundreds of artists with different styles. Scraps of feelings, shadows of emotions, parts of memories. My life was ripped apart and clumsily sewn back together, and the result was something like that disfigured doll I had found in the old camp together with Ilyana. Wait, or was it with Slavia? That night search for Shurik flew before my eyes with all these details, but I couldn't remember the face of a girl who was with me that time. 
that the dream was getting more foggy with every moment. Will it be forgotten soon? I can't let that happen. I must remember. Even without details, even without faces, even without names, I am sure it's not just a dream. I'm sh it's something bigger, something very important to me. A voice started to ring in my head, and it was not mine. It was someone else's. It was quiet and distant at first, but it was growing louder with every second, and soon I could almost make out the words. But it was probably just my imagination. Uh, one electrical brain impulse contained more thoughts than a thousand books. I remembered something in that dream I died left unfinished. The city? No, I had reached the city. Yulia. From the depths of my consciousness, the image of a cat girl arose. She stared at me furiously and moved her arms in a and moved her ears in a funny way. Was it not a dream? Was the week I spent in the camp not a dream? I walked around the room, looked out the window, and looked at the outside world was the same as yesterday. I was on the verge of going insane. The silence of my flat was disturbed by the ringing of a doorbell. Who, who, who might that be at such an hour? I didn't want to open the door at first, but I was even afraid. But then I thought that it was a good opportunity, good opportunity to check. Was this a dream? People in the dream and reality are totally different. I'll open the door and see. I made it to the entrance in two leaps, pulled the door open with the handle without even looking in the people, and... Wait till you see this, kids. Bam! The girls! But they're, but they're, they're all slightly they're all different in some... They're all different. The girls stood in front of the door. The girls from the camp. But something had changed about them. I didn't remember every detail of their appearance in the dream. However, Slavia's hairdo. And Yulia, and, and Yulia seemed taller. Or Ulya. Or Yana. That's why it's, that's why it's weird. I'm thinking of Yulia. Ulyana seemed taller. A heavy silence hung in the air for a moment. I was petrified, my thoughts frozen, feeling no fear or any other emotions. The girls seemed not to be surprised at all. Hi, Slavia said happily. Why are you standing there like a dummy? exclaimed Ilyana. How do you... I got words onto my tongue, but couldn't form a sensible question out of them. I had so many things to ask at once. Calm down, girls. You shouldn't ask a person... You shouldn't shock a person like this. I remembered Lena at once, remembered our life after the camp. And Slavia, that conversation at the night bus stop and Ilyana, our encounter at the university, and Alyssa at my concert, and even Masha in the other world, and the other world. But how? Well, yeah, to cut a long story short, Alyssa started to speak casually. Don't be so surprised that you think you were the only one in the camp. Yeah, yeah, in the camp, you weren't the only one. We were, we were there too. But how do you all together here? The point is that every one of us had, had her own camp and you had yours. I mean, in ours, you behaved differently. Slavia sounded awkward. Sa Slavia sounded awkward. Really differently. You chased me with that cake. I barely managed to escape. It turned out that we remembered everything before you did and st understood that they were not just dreams. Wait, but how is it only one day has passed? No, it's gone on much longer. At first I thought so too, that only I had dreams about the camp, and then people from there started to become more real. You started to. Uh, you, you started too. She sighed deeply. And those horrors. Seems like Lena will start crying any second now. Stop it already. I told you a thousand times it wasn't him. It was another Semyon. What does that mean, another Semyon? You see, there are many such dreams, many camps. Everyone has a personal one, and in each of them, you behave in different ways. Some somewhere, it is like that. She looked at Lena with sadness and went on. Many of your incarnations told us about other camps and other versions of us, but we were just dolls there, playing preset roles. I'm not some doll. Ilyana was outraged. We got tired of that, of course. We started to look for an exit, and one time, I got, I got to Miku's world. Don't call me that. But I remember. The camp was completely different there. We were shooting a movie, and... What's the difference? In any case, the dream repeated. Well, then we managed to connect the rest of the worlds into one for all five of us, and from there, it was all in, all in the bag. Alyssa smiled, and I recognized that smile. The only thing left was to find you. To find me? Why? I certainly wasn't against it. Everything fell into place at last. The camp, the pioneers, the camp leader, these girls. What about Yulia? Who? Yulia, the cat girl. Didn't you see her? Yeah, someone did mention something about that. How could that? I still felt somewhat guilty about leaving Yulia. That's how it is. Each of us had only one world of our own, and you had many of them. And then we understood that only one, that only you were connected with reality. How do you understand that? The pioneer told us. I mean, I mean the you who claimed to have been in that dream for a long time. Some weirdo, probably gone completely bananas. I couldn't get everything that they were saying straight in my mind. So do you think that Shadow Pioneer was actually, like, long, like, you know, like, been in here a long time, Semyon? Probably. Okay, wait. I put all my thoughts together. Then that camp was not a dream. Everything has been going on for a long time. There are many camps which had me and you, but each of you had one and I had many. No, I don't understand. That's about right. Stop sulking. You're so boring. It was a lot of fun. For example, I had never visited a pioneer camp. You probably hadn't either. But who was behind all this and why? That's why we came, to find it out. But how did you find me? Suddenly I had doubt and even fear. Well, Yana pinched me, at, pinched me at once. Ow. Uh, pinched me, pinched me once? Pinched me at once? Whoops, sorry. Uh, and in case you thought you're dreaming. Just in case you thought you were dreaming. It wasn't difficult. 
Your copies would certainly be talkative if they wanted to. Or if you forced them to, Lena added quietly. So first, I mean, I, I think in her bad ending, I think she goes all serial, serial killer mode and kills everybody. I think I read that once. Anyway, I mean, it's not something we're going to do, but I think I read that. So first we met and meet in real life. Then first we met in real life. Then we came to, then we came to you. Cre creature guess. Unbelievable. My life turned upside down in the blink of an eye. Obviously, I didn't remember this dream or dreams as girls said in full detail, uh, but I felt, too, that the camp was something bigger than that. It brought us together, at first there and now here. Only the question of Yulia still remained. But how might I know the answer? I could just forget it, just like I forgot many other things. Okay, I hope you tell me everything in detail. Sure, that's what we're here for. Well, come in. Don't stand on the, don't stand on the doorstep. Tea, coffee, dance, I added, trying to calm down and come, come, come to myself. Lena's eyes glared. All right, all right, we'll save the dancing for later. Hey, every story has its beginning and its end. Every story has its canvas. There's a notebook that we're reading it. Every book the last page. Open a new one tomorrow. There you go. Didn't expect that, did you? There you go. See, that was literally 14 minutes. Told you. Ha! Hair master level lady. There you go. See, so so basically that was it. That that's the fork in the road. And there's the harem end. So yeah, basically, uh, I guess that's it. So the other option here, so that's the fork in the road. You either get Yulia uh, or you get everybody else. So that's kind of rough, right? Because I really like Yulia. I, I, li I, mean, I like all of them, but I think Slavia and Yulia, it's, a kinda, it's pretty close between them. But I don't know, man. It's rough. It's rough. It's hard. I don't know what I would lean. I don't know what I would lean for. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I it's hard to say because that's the thing. In, in in theory, I'm totally behind the whole harem thing. Love that a lot. Here's the thing, though. I think I prefer Yulia and that ending more. Uh, I because I think I like the idea that none of these girls are like that. They're not like real world real. I think I like the idea that it's kind of all about kind of Semyon and how he experienced all of these lifetimes and he remembers them all but then he gets uh then he gets Yulia sorry it came on screen and I got completely distracted as you might imagine uh but I think I prefer Yulia and how you get her in the real world and I don't know I felt like that their connection was was a special especially uh, I think their 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 connection was special just like Slavia and Semyon felt a little bit special but I don't know. I think I prefer uh, Yulia and Semyon together, and that ending more. I think I liked that idea better. Uh, I think I, I yeah, I think that idea better because then Yulia and Semyon have their special ending. They find each other. They remember the camp, the, the whole nine. Um, but then, but then that way, uh, yeah, I don't know. But but then that way, um, no one's disappointed because uh, Yulia gets Semyon, and then it's happily ever after for them. And none of the other girls were actually like real life real, so there's no disappointment. So I th I think I prefer that, and uh, I think I prefer that. But all in all, that's it. We actually finished it. Surprise finale. Didn't expect that. I didn't either. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm happy I checked. Otherwise, that would have been really annoying tomorrow <laughs> to like hop on, like start recording, and it's just like 15 minutes. <laughs> that would that would have that would have been annoying. Anyway, but there we go. Now that's the real ending. So yeah, uh, didn't see that coming, did you? Anyway, so yeah, surprise finale. So now I'm unsure of what to do. I, like, should I record Saints Row after this? You know, because now this that makes this part like what, like, you know, two hours, forty-five minutes or something. So now it's like it's like a, a real main part extended. So so really, I could do Saints Row, but only up to like a max of two hours, and I probably would do hour and a half. So so it, like it should be real side game. The other option is we could do like a one-time goof off game. Uh, or we could, or we could edit the positive anime review today, and then call it good with that, and then kind of just start fresh. We could do something random tomorrow on Saturday, or just start Monday. I don't know what'll happen, but regardless, I will see you at some point today. Uh, cause yeah, I don't know. I'll see you at some point today with something else. I don't know what it'll be, and uh, then we'll, we'll just see what happens. Anyway, now the real outro. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the content today, and we will talk to you guys later. For realsies this time.